Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome into First Street. I'm Jake Johnson. I'm joined in the booth tonight by a good friend, Zach Case, who was here uh, a few weeks ago in December and now joining me back here in the press box. Zach, how are we doing today? Excited for some Federal Prospects Hockey League action. Yeah, thank you, Jake. Obviously, uh, thanks for having me back here at First Arena. It's always nice to come down here and call some hockey games. And, uh Glad to be back behind a mic. Excited for this matchup. Home and home series this weekend. We've got Binghamton, of course, playoffs right around the corner. So we're in the final stretch of the regular season. And it's a good time to get some points and improve the standings here heading into playoff hockey. And we got about 20 minutes until puck drop here. Pre-game show from First Arena in Elmira, New York. The Elmira Mammoth taking on the Binghamton Black Bears. We'll start with the Elmira Mammoth last week. Uh, a split weekend against the Port Huron Prowlers on Saturday night. They did come away with a 5-2 to two victory versus the Prowlers. Luke Richards, Tom McGuire, Tate Leeson, and Ricard Jelenskis uh, had goals. Jelenskis had two of them. And the star of the night, Danik Rodriguez, 52 saves, two goals allowed. Was peppered all night by his former team. They did a really good job in between the pipes, only allowing the two goals over 50 saves. I believe that's the most a mammoth goaltender has had all season. He gave his chance, the best team to win, and they did come out with a victory on Saturday. Yeah, that's obviously a huge win, and obviously the net mining doing wonders for Elmira. Of course, a comeback victory in the second and third period, able to get a W, get some points on the road. That's huge. And just looking at the Empire Division standing so far, Elmira coming coming in, 45 games played with a 13, 26, and 6 record for 44 points, and they sit five points behind the Watertown Wolves, where they, they have 43 games played, so two games at hand. And of course, the opponents tonight, the Binghamton Black Bears, sitting in second line, Dansbury, a 27-14-4 record, 82 points, a really good team out of Binghamton this year once again. And of course, if you can get two points tonight and improve your standings and try to pass Watertown, it's going to be a good regular postseason. This Binghamton team had a tough last few weeks. It was their down south stretch. And for this one, uh, their last game, a 9-5 to loss versus the Carolina Thunderbirds. And Austin Thompson with two goals. Gavin Yates with two goals. Jake Schultz with a goal. Riley McVay, 31 saves, eight goals allowed. And Joseph Taylor, the starter for tonight, nine saves and one goal allowed. Yeah, obviously huge things. And also looking at it, the previous game versus the Black Bears, of course, Binghamton's really had Elmire's number so far. A 1-5-0 record, dating all the way back to October 14th, a 10-1 loss to the Black Bears. But then Elmira getting their win against uh, the Black Bears back on January 20th, a 6-5 victory. So if the, the Mammoth can look back to that game, look back to that game notes, figure out, look at the tape, figure out what they did well against the Black Bears, bring that into tonight's contest. I know you talked a lot about cycling and rotating the offensive zone. They worked on, on that a lot in practice this week with the coaching staff. So we'll see if they can do that in the offensive zone this evening. In the you mentioned that game, a 6-5 to five win. Game-winning goal, 24 seconds remaining uh, from Chris Hunt, no longer on the Elmire Mammoth roster. And Harley saved 40 saves that night. Riley McVeigh, 28 saves. A great performance from Harley White in between the pipes. And it was a close game. It was an exciting game here at First Arena. I expect another one here tonight. The Mammoth specialty jerseys. They're wearing uh, their green jerseys in honor of St. Patrick's Day. They look really good. The building's filled with a lot of green. Now, I don't know if that's St. Patrick's Day or a lot of Binghamton Black Bears making the 45 tri trip down I-81. And, of course, tomorrow night we're going to head on the road. Jake and I will be on the road trip. And of course, if you look at it, look at these two teams in the stack comparison so far this season. Almira averaging 2.9 goals per game. Binghamton averaging 4.8. The goal differential minus 80 for Almira, plus 58 for Binghamton. So you're coming in against the opponent that loves to shoot the puck. They find the back of the net often. And then you look at the special team, 16.9% power play efficiency for Elmira, 81.3 on the penalty kill, and on the other side, Binghamton has the upper hand on both sides, 24.5 on the power play, and 82.3% power play or penalty kill efficiency. So really looking to see if the special teams will become an issue tonight for Elmira. We'll see if they can continue to put the puck in the net. Of course, 2.9 goals per game averaging so far this season. Of course, they scored a little bit more last game with five goals. So we'll see if they can bounce back and continue to put Bucks in the back of the night. And Zach, both teams tonight missing some key contributors for the Binghamton Black Bears. Scratch tonight, Tyler Jurich leads the team in goals with 24, leads the team in assists with 30. 
Well, second on the team, Tyson Kirkby, he is suspended uh, for tonight's game. He will be back in the lineup tomorrow night. But Kirkby, 23 goals scored, 28 assists for 51 points. You're missing your top two point getters, uh, and behind them is uh, Austin Thompson. He's having a good year. But how do you play with your top two point getters out of the lineup tonight? Well, you got to look deeper down the depth chart on the offensive side, and that's exactly what Binghamton's going to look for tonight. Of course, looking at it so far, the starting lineups, Andrew Logar coming in, making his first game uh, in an FBHL uh, league game this season. He's coming from the Buffalo State Bengals NCAA Division III team out of Buffalo, New York. And, of course, another player getting added to the roster uh, this season from Morrisville State is Justin Somero. So another guy, two guys getting rookie laps early in warm-ups today. Those guys, I'm looking to see if they can make an impact right off the get-go. Logar is going to be on the left side of that second line. Justin is going to be on the right side of that third line. Another guy, maybe Mac Lewis, number 19. I know we're familiar with him playing at Oswego State. He's a really good player. He's going to bring the grit, too, which you need to have a physicality if you're playing against Elmira tonight. So those are some guys I'm watching more on the deeper side. And, of course, Binghamton dressing 10 skaters tonight on the offensive side while Elmira is going with seven defensemen. Yeah, in case you mentioned those names, and it sounds like a lot of Suniac hockey to me, and that's obviously something that we're super familiar with. Looking at the Elmira Mammoth side of things, they are also missing a few key contributors. Nick Golo out two games uh, for a suspension that he suffered last Saturday against the Port here on Prowlers. Molovac still out of the lineup with an upper body injury, as well as Nathan Campbell still out of the lineup with an upper body injury. But Zach, the Mammoth do get some key contributors back in the lineup. Stavros Soilis, who's missed the last two weekends, uh, he's back in the lineup. And Kyle Stevens as well, he missed last weekend. He's back in the lineup. So you lose a few guys, but the Mammoth, they're adding their reinforcements back in. Well, you look at some of the depth here on the man side of things. And of course, Trisha Mock, a guy you've talked highly about so far since joining the team. He's a player to watch tonight from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Four goals, 12 assists for 16 points. Of course, we always got to talk about Tate Leeson, the Smith Falls, Ontario, Canada native with 16 goals, 19 assists, and 35 points on the season. And you bring up Kyle Stevens, you bring up uh, Star Wars Toilets. A lot of guys that can put the puck in the back of the net, of course, are missing. Nick Gullo, like you talked about, on the defensive side, Noah Wilds, someone to look out for, add some depth on the defense. And just looking through the rest of the lineup, you look at Dalton Anderson coming from Columbus. He's really made an impact. He's at the 20-point mark, looking at a point every other game right now uh, as we close in on the end of the season. So I'm very excited to see what these guys can do on the de deeper side of the lineup. Obviously, when you're missing guys like Mo Levac and, and Nick Gullo, you've got to make up for it. Binghamton's going to make up for it with their depth. Almire is going to have to match that tonight on the third and second line. You talk about some guys that are pretty streaky right now. Luke Richards, six points in his last nine games since he came over from Danbury's two straight games with a goal and three out of the last four games with a goal. Tristan Mock played four games for Elmire. He's got five assists. And then you look at Thomas McGuire, four straight games with a point. So some guys that have been playing on the third line, they do get separated a little bit tonight. But those guys that have been playing some third line minutes, the guys that we call the grinders, uh, they're really putting the work in, and they've been able to help out this Mammoth team in the last few weeks. Well, if you're the players and you're looking at the scouting report, you got to know who's coming in with the hot hand. And, and if you're the coaching staff, you got to give those players that information. Hey, you're going to shut down so-and-so tonight, this guy, the guy in the third line too. And you do that with physicality, hard hockey. You got to make sure you can let them create. Can't give them time and space. Got to take away a lot of the angles and really play a really hard forecheck. I think Elmira started to do that last time I was here in December. And I hope they can bring that tonight and really recreate what they had on the road in Port Huron in that second game later, maybe in the second, third period. Just about nine minutes until puck drop. We're going to take a quick break here from the first arena press box. Don't go anywhere. We'll have our players to watch as well as our score predictions.
Good evening and welcome back to First Arena. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. The Elmira Man with 13, 26, and 6 take on the Binghamton Black Bears, who come in 27, 14, and 4 in second place in the Empire Division. The Mam is sitting in fourth place with 44 points. And they uh, this season, the Mammoth coming off a game against the Port Huron Prowlers that they won 5-2. to two. The Black Bears coming off a 9-5 to five loss versus the Carolina Thunderbirds. And Zach, a few games going on around the FPHL tonight. Delaware taking on Port Huron. Mississippi against Columbus. Danbury against the Watertown Wolves. And Motor City taking on the Carolina Thunderbirds. Well, I think every Elmira Mammoth fan has... The Delaware Thunder and Port Huron Prowlers game on notifications because that is the game to watch, folks. We do not need Delaware to find a win tonight. If you're a Mammoth fan, obviously, you want to stay above them in the rankings, make it into the postseason in your first inaugural season here in the FPHL. So that is something to watch here. And obviously, game is already underway, a 7.05 puck drop there. So a 1-1 game already. 12 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first period. And another game to keep your eye on. Danbury taking on the Watertown Wolves. The Mammoth trail the Wolves by five points in the Empire Division standings. A few wins here and there to string together. They have the uh, opportunity to come up and try and catch Watertown. Those two teams have one meeting remaining. Yeah, those are going to be big games. Obviously looking all the way around at final stretch of the season here. Every point counts. You're deep into the season, so anything you screwed up earlier on in the year, you got to put that behind you and just look the next 20 minutes. And I think that's what Elmira needs to do here. You look at it, you're, you're fourth right now in the Empire Division. You're in a healthy spot right now, and you come into a matchup against Binghamton where you can steal points away. We've already seen it happen so far this year, and this is where the point where you come in, you put 20 minutes up on the board, you play the first period, you head into the intermission, and you talk to the coaching staff and talk to the rest of the guys. They need to go 20 by 20 here and make sure they come away with two points. For the Mammoth tonight, uh, we're going to get to our players to watch. And a guy that I've noticed the last few weeks in the lineup, I talked about him a little bit already, but that's Tristan Mock. Normally wears number 89, but tonight he'll be wearing number 8. Five assists for Elmira in four straight games. He had four goals and seven assists this year for Danbury. I think he's going to crack into the goal column tonight for the Mammoth. Obviously played a year at Westfield State and a year at Becker College. Five goals and three assists. Tristan Mock, a speedy skater, knows his way around the rink, uh, and he's going to give the Mammoth a really good opportunity tonight. Well, Jake, I think overall that's a really good pick. I think for me, looking at it, I think an easy choice here is Tate Leeson. He's going to make an impact tonight in the offensive zone. He also plays that 200-foot game, so it's something to watch out for. In terms of the stats, we talked about it on the pregame show, 16 assists, 19, or 19 assists, 16 goals uh, so far in 36 games played. So a guy I'm watching tonight, he'll have an impact, and we'll see if he can uh, put a goal in the back of the net and get everyone on their feet here. For the Binghamton Black Bears, I'm looking at the two new guys, Justin Samaro as well as number 18, Andrew Logar. We talked about him a little bit before. Experience playing in the SUNYAC, one coming from SUNY Morrisville, and that being Samaro played the last three seasons there, 10 goals and 23 assists. And for uh, Andrew Logar playing college hockey at Buffalo State, 17 goals and 22 assists in 96 games played. So he has a lot of college experience. He's going to try and translate that onto the pro stage a little bit, and we'll see that tonight tonight uh, as they take on the Mammoth. Well, who I'm looking for is the two Thompsons on the team. So they're not brothers, but they're point getters. Everett Thompson, number nine, from he formerly played for the Motor City Rockers of the FPHL. He's got 33 games played, 24 goals, 30 assists for 54 points. And of course, Austin Thompson, number 25 tonight, formerly played for the Danbury Hattricks. 40 games played so far this season, 22 goals, 21 assists for 43 points. You're missing some key guys, some guys that lead the points column so far this season. For Binghamton, those guys are going to need to step it up a lot, along with the rest of the roster for the Black Bears. And we'll get to our score predictions here, Zach. I'm going to go with a Mammoth victory tonight. I think they're going to come away with a 5-3 to three victory tonight. But I do think the Mammoth are going to split this weekend. I think Binghamton, this is their last game on their road trip. Yes, I know it's only 45 minutes down the road, but last game on the road trip. They'll be back home tomorrow night. I think that bodes well for them. But I think this last game on the road trip, they're going to struggle a little bit. The Mammoth coming in. Fiery, off a win, New Jersey's, the the swagger's there tonight here for Almira. I think Binghamton's going to falter a little bit without Tyson Kirkby in the lineup, without Tyler Jurich in the lineup. It's going to be interesting to see how they play 5-3, Mammoth victory. Well, I think overall, you look at it, I have to agree with you. I think both home teams are going to get victories this weekend. It's going to start here tonight with Almira. 
but just looking at it, it's one of those things where you're, you're coming into this contest. You got to get two points right off the get go here if you're Elmira. Tomorrow night, we'll see if Binghamton can possibly bounce back. But I have to agree with you here. And you talk about the road trip, going on the road for two weeks. This is a road game for Binghamton, but the 45 minute drive doesn't really impact the Black Bears faithful. They are in full force tonight. It's kind of a 50 50 rank, in my opinion, in the stands. And we'll see if Elmira can really silence the road crowd early and get the home fans on their feet. Give me a 3 2 victory. It's going to be a close one. Maybe even an empty netter, make it a 3 1 game. But overall, I think Elmira is going to come away with a victory and come away with two points. Both these two teams, 2-6-2 two, and two in their last 10 games. We'll see how they fare tonight. Starting lineups and then National Anthem. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Puck drop just a few moments away. And welcome back, a beautiful representation of the Star Spangled Banner here at First Arena. Jake Johnson alongside me, Zach Case, as we take you through 60 minutes of hard fought hockey between the Elmira Mammoth and the Binghamton Black Bears. Starting lineups first for your Elmira Mammoth. The three forwards, Lance Hamilton, Tristan Mock, and Luke Richards. The defenseman, Jim Jensen, and Blake Cudmore. And in between the pipes, finally back in the lineup for the Elmira Mammoth. That is number 30, Thomas Proudlock. And of course, as we have a ceremonial puck drop right now, Elmira's going to come off flying right away. I think he's the game for both sides. You got to get rid of the bus legs for the Black Bears. You got to come out and really test Proudlock. Of course, he's returning after some time. And on the other side, really, Elmira, you just got to get the home crowd into it. Wearing some specialty jerseys. The fans came out here on a Friday night after a long work day, possibly. And obviously, if Elmira can get it done, get a goal early in this game, and just solidify themselves, get two points, get a win. We're going to check up 20 minutes here in First Arena and puck drop underway here for some more FBHL hockey. Starting lineup for the Binghamton Black Bears, Mac Lewis, Andrew Logar, and Gavin Yates. The two defensemen, Jake Schultz, and on the other side, Kyle Powell. Yates skates in the offense zone. Yates shoots, saved there from Proudlock. And we're going to get a quick whistle already. 
The puck was loose inside the blue crease there. Went off a proud lock and then kind of sat there. A defenseman came in and pushed it away. And I don't know what the whistle's for, actually. Seems like the officiating crew doesn't really know what the whistle's for either. Looks like it was just an early whistle from the referee. Lost sight of the puck. Hey, that happens when you're down there in the corner. But 15 seconds in, and what an opportunity from Rage. Right off the deco. An even better save, though, from Proudlock. And in between the pipes tonight for the Binghamton Black Bears is Taylor Joseph. Riley McVeigh backing up tonight. Yeah, Taylor Joseph, a guy to watch in between the pipes. Comes in with a 3.17 goals against average of .919 save percentage. Mammoth worked the puck through the neutral zone. It's Luke Richards wearing number 22 tonight here for the Mammoth. Repping the green sweaters. Pattern shaped. Into the offense zone works Mac Lewis. Lewis down low for Yates. Yates to the back end. He threw his one on. Lewis with a chance. It's saved there by Prowlock. Mock pushed down from behind by Lewis. Puck flutters into the near side corner. Centering pass picked right up by Lance Hamilton. Hamilton cross for Mock. Mock going to dump it in. Mammoth get a change. First change of the game. 55 seconds in for Elmira. And JT Walter is going to wait behind Joseph. As Binghamton sends out some fresh skaters. Well, the Black Bears went with the second line to start here, and it was a really good shift. Three quality opportunities, but Proudlock made some big saves locking down the net. Parker has his pass intercepted by Stevens. Stevens in his own zone for Schmidt. Schmidt rink wide for Stevens. Outstretched pass for him and through the neutral zone. It's poked free, Tate Leeson. Leeson has it worked off his stick, Austin Thompson. Thompson saucers one across, Noah Wild connects a body on him, pounds that puck. Bouncing into the air, finds its way back for Schmidt. Schmidt for Leeson. Leeson gains the offense zone. He's with Soilus. Leeson shoots on Joseph. Glove save. Yeah, really good glove save. And just looking at goaltending tonight, we already talked about Taylor Joseph. Comes in at 6-1 in the height column. And then on the other side, Thomas Proudlock, 6 foot. He's already played 25 games this season. A 3.67 goals against average. A point nine or nine one zero save percentage. So goaltending's stellar. This, this evening for both sides, and the offense is going to have a lot of work to do for him on either side. On the faceoff, it's in the offensive zone of the Mammoth. Now worked through by Gino D'Angelo. D'Angelo skates through, gains the offensive blue line. He's going to skate to the high slot, play it down low. Shot coming on, that save by Proudlock. Bounces into the near side corner. D'Angelo spins away from one hit, picks it up along the half wall, going to play it down low. Pikarski battling in it. Reinserted back into the lineup. And playing it all the way deep down low for Justin Samaro. Samaro held off the puck by Tyson Lambert. McGuire going to float one through. That goes under the stick of Boilar. Anderson foot race with D'Angelo. D'Angelo swipes it through. Yelenskis. He'll pick up. Yelenskis shoots. Save there by Joseph. With some carnage all over the place. And held on to it. 17-41. Yeah, McGuire caught a body at the end of the shift there. And some frustration from the Black Bears. But really good shift there from Almira. Able to keep everything to the exterior in their own zone and then get a nice clear goes off a sick a lucky bounce possibly good rush from Dolan Anderson and the better shot from Jalensi so really good start here from both sides 17-41 remaining for scoreless here in first arena face off going to be won by the Black Bears Jake Schultz in the near side corner he'll play it through held up at the half wall Mac Lewis can't handle the pass Cubmore floats it to the far side Powell chops it out of the air plays it down to his tape near side Schultz Schultz, D to D with Powell. And Powell will play it through into the neutral zone, finds the tape of Gavin Yates. Yates, he'll hand off for Andrew Logar. Logar, work down into the corner. It's going to bring a penalty here on Elmira. And Mock touches up. And it'll be a power play for the first time tonight for the Binghamton Black Bears. It's going to send the 38-year-old Jim Jensen to the box. Yeah, it's going to be a tripping call there on the defenseman. Just looking at the penalty kill unit tonight for Almira, 81.3%. Binghamton coming in with a power play rating of 24.5 power play efficiency. So we'll see what the special teams does, makes an impact. I think right off the get-go, Almira can do a better job defensively coming in back on the rush, picking up sticks, and the defensemen need to step up on the blue, top, blue line and try to get someone offside. Oliveri works the top for Samaro. Samaro back to Oliveri. Near side, Yarwa, cross side, Samaro. Samaro shoots, that one goes wide. And it circles its way all the way out into the neutral zone. So remember, Samaro's first game here, joining from Morrisville State. He was looking upper corner blocker side, and 
You got to be careful when you take shots like that because it can just wrap around, and now they got to get another zone entry here on the power play. Yates loses it. The puck comes back out into the neutral zone. This Binghamton power play missing one of their key contributors in Tyler Jurich. Leads the team in power play goals. Oliveri thought about one. Now he's going to slowly walk in. Shoots in a blocker save. Proud lock. Kept in the corner by Samaro. To the point, Oliveri. Near side, Yarwood. Yarwood shoots. Deflected out in front. Proudlock hanging on to it. And the puck still loose. Bunch of guys jabbing at it. And Proudlock has it contained. A minute and seven seconds left on the penalty. Really good opportunity there from the Black Bears as they walk in. Proudlock saves one off his pinky toe and is able to cover up the loose puck in the crease. And it was really a team effort to just shut it down. But... It was just time and space right on the power play, setting up the umbrella formation at the top, just walking in, taking a shot from the high slot. And as that shot and play was happening, you hear a Black Bears chant coming from the crowd. So talk about a 50-50 crowd tonight here in the first arena. Powell at the point. Plays for Schultz. Schultz back to Powell, catches it between his skates to the far side. Now in the slot, Parker. Parker down low. That pass tipped by the Mammoth and cleared out into the neutral zone. Really good defensive stick there in the formation from the penalty killing unit. A good passing play from the Black Bears, but it was a good defensive stick. Parker sent off the puck. Shot on there by Thompson. Worked away by Proudlock. Back to the point. Powell. Powell the drive. That one saved. Schultz will keep it in the Black Bears' possession. Thompson plays to the far side for Chad Lopez. Lopez rings it back around the boards. Schultz for Powell. Powell back to Schultz. Schultz will pick up off the boards. 15 seconds left on the power play. Chad Lopez now on the far side for Powell. Powell throws one on net. That one wide to Proudlock. Kept in the possession of Binghamton. Schultz wraps it around below the goal line. Finds Stevens, and Stevens clears it down. Mammoth one for one tonight on the Vicenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill. Obviously a good thing. You talk about the Black Bears missing some important power play guys, and it showed there a couple of missed zone entries and some lost time on the two-minute minor. Dalton Anderson on the backhand. No float one through the neutral zone. Played off Lance Hamilton into the Black Bears zone. D'Angelo to the near side for Samaro. Samaro going to wrap it back around for Matthew Boilar. Boilar takes one hit there from Anderson. Anderson goes down. and It'll be played through into the neutral zone. Thompson worked off the puck. Lance Hamilton tried to shield away from the one hit coming from Newberg. And it's going to be an icing call here at 14-26. But that brings us to our under-15 media timeout. Yeah, good starts from either side. I was talking about the Black Bears just really taking over on zone entry, heading into the, into the offensive zone. And... If you look at it, really, if, if they could do a better job of stepping up there on the blue line and holding everyone down, it would be a really better job on the defensive end of creating some turnovers in the turnover zone and heading into the, uh, in, into the neutral zone. Some of these guys on this Binghamton team uh, that have relied heavily on assists, and most of them coming from Tyler Jurich. Gavin Yates, 25 assists. Brett Parker with 19 assists. And then you also look on the defense side of the puck, Powell, 23, and Cam Yarwood, 22. So this uh, Binghamton Black Bears roster that's also missing Colin Fitzgerald, uh, who's out tonight with an upper body contusion. It's... It's kind of boding well for Elmira, but these first five or six minutes, Binghamton, they've came out with the power. They've came out uh, and played the better game through the first six, leading in the shots column six to two. We got to remember, Jake, they're on a two-game losing streak right now. They're looking for points, too. They're trying to jump in the first place here in the division. So what a game to do that. Obviously, they have Elmira's numbers so far this season, being five and one overall. And this is just one of those things where the Black Bears came to play tonight, and Elmira's going to have to match that now and try to find another gear here with 14.26 remaining. But they're going to set up for an offensive zone faceoff on the left side of Joseph. So we'll see what they can run here. Obviously stepping in for a big faceoff here coming out of the media timeout. After the interview with Kyle Stevens that we did the other day, he's going to take the offensive zone faceoff against Josh Newberg. Held up in the faceoff circle. Played into the far side corner. Newberg wraps it around looking for Somero. Held up by Chris Maritea. Maritea missed Saturday's game for Elmira. They find Samara. Samara going to work through his own zone. Pass off for Thompson. Thompson throws one on that. That one goes high over. That is 
Everett Thompson from the Motor City Rockers. Tate Leeson flies through the neutral zone. Tate Leeson now one-on-one -on -one with Gino D'Angelo. Spins, centers a pass. Stevens, Stevens shot blocked by the skate to Boilar. And working the other way, two on two, is Gino D'Angelo. He's got Gavin Yates with him. Gonna work down to the near side. Maritea rides him off the puck. So he just plays to the far side. Lambert through the neutral zone for Tate Leeson. Leeson one-on-one, -on -one, JT Walters. He'll skate in the offensive zone. Circle with the puck, keep it on his possession. Look to play for Stevens. The Mammoth can't handle it, works back through the neutral zone. Jim Jensen in his own end. Plays it off the boards. Stevens for Tom McGuire. McGuire pass up Yelensky's. McGuire gets lit up by Yates through center ice. And the Black Bears take possession. It's Andrew Logar. Logar into the offense zone. Plays to the far side, Lewis. Lewis couldn't drag it. And it falls off his stick. Yelensky's now with Tom McGuire. Plays off Anderson. Anderson two on two. Skates in the off zone. Anderson couldn't get the shot off his stick. JT Walters looks to clear. Pass out of front. Anderson. Anderson had a chance out in front. And it was just too far from him. 12-52 remaining in the first. Well, Myers getting some chances here, but you got to take advantage when you get an opportunity. And Anderson walking through, finds a loose puck and just unable to keep his stick on it. And it's really a missed chance here in the first period. Lance Hamilton able to swipe one through for Lambert. Played to the far side. Jim Jensen skating on. Pinching in is Chad Lopez. He'll take the body. Played out to the point. Schultz with the drive. Stick save. Proud lock. Goes high off the glass. Yelenskis backhands one along looking for Luke Richards. Richards couldn't handle the pass. Cudmore. He's going to take a stick up to the face from Don Oliveri. And the Mammoth, they get a power play of their own with 12-17 left in the first. Well, the extra share is going to go to the box. It's going to be for two minutes here. Just a basic minor penalty, and he got a stick lifted and went right up into, looks like the back of the head there. So good call, good way to win a minor penalty there, and you find yourself on the power play with 12-17 remaining here in the first period. We talked about the power play on a pregame show. For Elmire, 16.9%. The penalty kill for Binghamton, 82.3%. So pretty good penalty kill unit. We'll see if the power play can set up their overload with the power play one out there right now. Binghamton, 40 power play goals allowed this season. It'll be Soilus at the point. It's Mammoth power play running all five forwards. Soilus along the half wall. Down low, Leeson. Leeson back to Soilus, top of the circle. He'll skate to the blue line with it. Pass for Steven. Steven to drive. And saved by Taylor Joseph. Fanning on the clear was Austin Thompson. Leeson glides with it. He'll shoot on, and that one wide to Joseph. Puck still loose. Jake Schultz going to poke it free. And Schultz going to skate out with it. Look to kill some time. Crosses the red line. And he'll fire one in deep. Proud like out of the cage to play it. Stops it behind the net. Plays to the far side. Miscommunication there for... The purple and orange. And it's going to be Boilar in the neutral zone for JT Walters. Newberg, pass intercepted. Leeson has to wait. Now he'll step into the offensive zone. Plays back for Richards. Richards loses it. He's going to be taken down. No hands raised for a trip. With 52 left. Well, Jake, there's definitely hands raised. It just did not come from the two guys that need to make the call. So... You know, just sloppy play here so far on the power play. So he listen to the offensive zone. He'll play one down low, takes one off the boards. Mock, out for Stevens, touch for Soilus. Back to Mock. Mock on the far side. He'll skate out to the top of the circle with it. Plays for Stevens on the near side corner. Stevens, cross ice pass Anderson. He'll fan on it. JT Walters looking to clear the bouncing puck. Newberg and McGuire battling. 10 seconds remaining on the power play. Stevens down low. He'll walk out with it. Down low, McGuire. McGuire to the point, Tristan Mock. Mock for Cudmore. Cudmore fans on the initial shot. Plays off Anderson, shoots glove save. Joseph at 10-11 remaining in the first. Well, if you're Elmire, you just got to do a better job of getting shots on that and testing Joseph. So far, 7-3 on the unofficial shot counter in favor of Binghamton. And in terms of that power play, maybe one, two shots on that, not what you want. And you got to do a better job of creating some space, moving the puck around. It just looked like they were all out of sync there uh, during those two minutes. So could definitely do a better job. Both penalty kill units now one for one on the evening. 
Luke Richards face off with Chad Lopez. Held up in the circle. Finally finds its way out for Austin Thompson. Thompson plays one through. Cudmore bounces out in front. Of, finds Oliveri. Oliveri circle saved there by Proudlock. He smothers it between the sweater and the jersey in the glove. Well, Proudlock is the reason why this is a 0-0 hockey game right now. I think Elmire's given up way too many odd man opportunities to start in the first 10 minutes of this hockey game. And it's definitely shown on the shot column and some of the chances they're getting right away. So looks like we're going to have our media timeout now. As some of the players skating away because the referee made the decision. So looks like we'll go back and we'll have that. Well, I guess we're having that face off now. So. So more miscommunication between these referees. I believe it has to be a 9.59 to Needs technically to under, under 10. 10. Under 10, yeah. Based on how you've been saying it, just that makes sense, right, Jake? Under under 10. It would make sense, but at this point, not too sure. Who knows, man? Jensen can't handle the pass. It's going to be through for Mock. Richards looking to clear the zone, and he will away from Jake Schultz. Kyle Powell going to pick up in his own zone. Powell. Fires one in deep. Proud luck out of his cage to play it. Plays to the far side. Austin Thompson right there to pick up for Powell. Powell throws one on net. Down low. Oliveri. Stick save. Proud luck. Puck loose underneath him. He's diving to cover it up, and Luke Richards is going to skate away with it. Richards two on two with Lance Hamilton. Into the offense zone. Throws one on Joseph. Bouncing puck out in front. To the far side. Hamilton couldn't poke it home. Richards tried to center one. Schultz going to play it on a backhand along. For Kyle Powell and the alternate captain going to wait behind the cage as both teams send out some fresh legs. Well, what an opportunity. A loose puck, a scrum in front of the net, and it was Proudlock actually kind of throwing his stick there to get the blocker down after a chance and went off the post. So, man, it's got to be careful the back door. Lewis, pass to the far side. Proudlock able to come out and carry it into the corner with his pads. Finds JT Wallers back to the neutral zone. Yardwood touches through for Mac Lewis. Lewis right in front with Yates. Going to play it down low for him. Yates back along for Lewis. Lewis circles the net. Plays for Yates. Yates going to ring it around to the near side corner. Tate Leeson. Leeson floats one through. Finds Soilis patrolling the far side blue line. He'll go into the offensive zone. Looking for Leeson. And he was handcuffed by the pass. It's going to find the Blackbirds the other direction. Two on three. Yates with Andrew Logar. Yates. Sent off the puck by Lambert. Center and pass Yates. He'll work around. Throws one on. What a save. Proudlock with the pad. Keeps this thing tied. Now Logar shoots. That one goes high off the glass. Bounces down in front. And cleared out of the zone by Leeson. Hand raised, but it won't reach the red line. No icing. A big pad save there by Proudlock. Just able to wait out the shooter at Yates. And Yates was doing the same thing. Being very patient. Drag it all the way around the crease. But an even bigger save. And that's a really good chance once again from the Black Bears. Still 0-0. Samaro plays it down low. And Proudlock covers it with the glove to freeze it at 7.42. And now we'll get our under 10 timeout. And Zach, this Bama team, they haven't had very many great A opportunities. Binghamton, they're owning the classroom right now. A's all over the board. Well, you just look at it, Binghamton, ever since that power play uh, from Elmira going nil, it was one of those things where they took the momentum from their penalty kill unit and transitioned that into offense. And they're getting their opportunities right now. They're getting chances, but the guy standing in the way is Proudlock. Ten shots on goal for Binghamton, five for Elmira, and it really shows so far in this contest where it's coming from. And it, it, it really shows. The amount of opportunities they're getting on the on-man rushes, the chances they're getting, they're working multiple chances in the zone at one time. That's what you need. You can't have a one and done like we see on the other end of the ice. So really good job so far from the Black Bears. And obviously they got to catch their breath here. They're talking to the coaching staff, making sure they can sort it all out. They really need to just pick up guys in their defensive zone. A new addition to the coaching staff over there for this weekend. Former Binghamton Black Bear and current Elmira Mammoth defenseman who's dealing with a lower body injury. MJ Merkel doing some defensive duties on the bench here for Elmira. Running through some plays you can see there. MJ Merkel talking his group through. If anybody on this team knows about Binghamton, it's MJ Merkel. Well, hey, you got to get the whiteboard out every once in a while. Drop some plays and... That's exactly what he's doing. He's breaking it down in the defensive zone, figuring out what their defensive formation is. And hey, I would want my defensive coach doing that too. And definitely a good sign to see that's what you need to do in, during these media timeouts. And Elmira needs to turn this game around. Right now, this first period has been owned by the Black Bears. Boiler shoots that one. Whistles wide to the far side post. 
D'Angelo able to poke it back in. Parker away from Jensen. Goes to the backhand along the half wall. Stops in the circle. Hassled by Mammoth. And Cubmore floats one through and in the neutral zone. Boiler going to catch a play back down to his tape. Tom McGuire looking up for Jelensky. Jelensky has it go between his skates. D'Angelo to the far side. Leaves it off for Boiler. Boiler off the boards for Samaro. And Cubmore flies one into the offensive zone again. Mammoth had to touch up. Delayed off sides. Gives Binghamton a chance to set up. D'Angelo down the right wing. He'll play one into the offensive zone. Works its way behind the goal line. Centering pass picked up by McGuire. McGuire looks to clear. He can't. Powell skating through. Powell walks in. Shoots. Saved. Another good save there, but it's a bad defensive turnover there by McGuire. Couldn't get it out. Prowl coming right off the bench with speed. Walks in, makes a couple moves, and puts it on net. Prowl lock an even better save by him so far in net. And just one of those things where Elmire gets the puck and they just throw it away into the neutral zone. Kind of carelessly, they need to have some poise here with the puck. Thompson shoots immediately off the faceoff, and Proudlock makes another glove save. 6.48 remaining in the first, still scoreless between Binghamton and Elmira. Yeah, we'll see if Elmira can get a win here in the defensive zone, run a faceoff play. Right now, the Blackbird is kind of owning the faceoff circle, and it really comes to the possession time as well. Schmidt to the near side, played through. The neutral zone looking for Lance Hamilton. It's worked off his stick by Schultz. Mock can't handle it. Oliveri into the offense zone. Stops at the blue line. Plays down low for Lopez. Right in front. Picked up at the blue paint by Thomas Proudlock, and he'll freeze it at 631. Yeah, kind of lackluster hockey right now. Not a lot of shots coming on net from either side. And just face off after face off. No one can really handle the puck out there. And a couple flybys from Elmira leads to possession time for the Black Bears, finding the puck in the neutral zone, walking in, getting shots on the exterior, just trying to set up the offense. Another offense zone faceoff win here for the Black Bears. Lopez across all a very shot wide. Played out to the point, Powell. Powell throws one on net. It's going to be picked up by the goal line for Oliveri. He fans on the pass. Soilis looking to clear it out of the zone. No wild. Can't get it out either. Oliveri finds a streaking. Lopez, Lopez shoots, and another save, proud lock. Well, if you're Oliveri, you get a wide open opportunity. The whole right side, wide open. Proud lock unable to go post to post quick enough to get there. Another missed chance on a great A opportunity. It goes wide back behind the net. And it came from a defensive turnover once again from Elmira. So better poise on the puck. Got to have a, some control. And you got to know what you're doing with it once you get it. It can't be, hey, I'm going to chuck this around the boards and get rid of it and get it off my stick. Lewis, pass picked off by Jelenski. Jelenski's going to chase after into the far side corner, JT Walters. Has it on the forehand, stops behind Joseph. And as we hit under six minutes remaining, for Gavin Yates. Yates missed the last meeting between these two teams as he was out with a suspension. Jelenski's picks up, skates into the offense zone down the near side, shoots in a glove save. Joseph bounces in and out. Puck loose out in front, McGuire jabbing at it. And now held on to... By number 72, Taylor Joseph. Well, I really like that opportunity. You gain the puck in the neutral zone. You get an opportunity, and it's a loose puck in net. It's McGuire crashing the net. That's what you need to do, looking for those rebounds, and unable to get it by Joseph in that. But good opportunity and a, a good start, really. I like the second line for the Matt, or for the Black Bears, though, with Lewis, Yates, and, of course, Andrew Logar, the, the rookie. Jelenski's kicking it along the boards, comes out on the backhand, plays out to the point, Maritea. Maritea plays one down low. It's caught up in the skates of JT Walters. He's able to get back to it. Logar, rink wide, Mac Lewis. Lewis has it off his skates and played back into the offense zone. Yates hampered by Jelenski. That'll bring up a penalty. And it's going to be Ricard Jelenski's headed to the box. He had two goals last game for Elmira. He's a guy that once he gets hot, he stays hot. Yeah, it's going to be a holding penalty there. He kind of wrapped up Yates on a flyby looking for a puck on the fourth check and got him for holding. You just can't take that. It's a lazy penalty, a lazy call. And the referees are going to nag on it every time. So 5-17 remaining here. Second power play opportunity for Binghamton. See if they'll take advantage. They like to set up that umbrella and get some shots on Proudlock. Oliveri to the top of the point. He'll walk in, shoot. That one blocked. Yates took a tumble down in the slot. It's going to be Samaro. Samaro 
holding on to it to the far side, Oliveri. Oliveri through for Yarwood. Yarwood able to get away from the hampering Dalton Anderson. A twig flying through the air. Center for Yates. Yates for Yarwood. Yarwood in the circle, Oliveri. Dangles by one to the backhand. Shoots, easy glove save, proud lock. Yeah, well, it's Wild just peppering the eights in the middle there. That's why that stick went flying. And Wild just got to be careful. Can't get an interference penalty. Can't take down a guy in the back for cross checking. Just got to be really careful about that. And we'll have another immediate timeout under five minutes. And obviously, just got to be very careful on that penalty kill. But a good stop so far. For the Mammoth, already one for one tonight on the kill. And as we head to the final five of this period, 131 left on the penalty. You got to build off the momentum here. If you can kill this penalty, head into the locker room with some good vibes, get some shots off on Taylor Joseph, and have a great opportunity here as we head into the first intermission. I definitely agree with you, Jake. It's just one of those things where you come in, you got to get out of this penalty kill. You can't have a parade to the penalty box tonight, especially against this big of the team. And they just haven't taken advantage of any of the opportunities they've gone here in the first 20 minutes. And that's the difference between a 2-1 or a 2-0 hockey game in favor of the road team. And it's showing right now on the scoreboard with zeros on either side. It's very interesting to see Justin Samara already on power play one, just fresh out of college. Normally a role Tyler Jurich plays, see if he can fill the void that this Black Bears team is missing. Oh yeah, the rookie playing on the left side of the umbrella. He's a righty, so it makes sense to have him closer in there. And we'll see if he can take advantage as they're going to work the puck around to the two guys on the left and the right. Lewis, a big body. You'll see him probably end up in front of the net, maybe below the goal line, too, on this power play unit. 448 remaining. Another offensive zone faceoff win. Oliveri, one timer. That one saved. Bounces through and it scores. It's tipped down in front, deflected past Thomas Proudlock. It's a power play goal for the Binghamton Black Bears, their 54th of the season. And they take a 1 0 lead with 4.42 to play Looks in the like first. It's going to be Oliveri getting the power play goal on that one. Fourth goal of the season for him. Chuck it up as a man advantage goal as well. 1 0 with 4.42. And it took an odd bounce. It was Noah Wild who blocked it. He was able to get the initial block, but it was able to just trickle in. I don't know if it went off a stick from a defenseman, but it found its way in the back of the net. And there's that first opportunity that's going to go in. It came right off the faceoff. Mock immediately the other direction shoots. Joseph glove save. Basically how you want to answer immediately after a goal, a quick shot off the faceoff. There's just been a couple weaker shots from the Mammoth so far tonight. Not getting a lot of power on it. Mock with a... Plenty of speed coming right off the faceoff. It's the Black Bears didn't tie him up, so good chance there from Elmira. Richards off the faceoff. Oliveri plays a high off the glass, caught by Powell. Powell going to skate past the logo now into the offensive zone. Kyle Powell down the near side. Threw one on net, and that one blocked by Pikarski. Picked up in center for Thompson. His shot off the glass. Far side, Schultz. Schultz with a drive. That one goes to the near side. Pass up, and... Mock couldn't hit the streaking Luke Richards who had nobody but clean ice in front of him. Finds Hamilton. Hamilton throwing one in front, blocked by Schultz. Schultz for Oliveri. Far side Thompson. Thompson has it off his skates. And Lambert able to play it through into the neutral zone. Powell picks up the bouncing puck to the far side Schultz. Schultz stretches one through for Lopez. Connects right to his tape. Lopez worked off the puck by Pikarski. And Schmidt is going to be sent off for delay a game at 347, and immediately the Black Bear is gonna get another power play. Yeah, he just missed the glass there on the clearing attempt, and just once again, Elmire just throwing away pucks when they get them, and we've seen it twice on that shift alone before it went into the stands, and you get the puck, you just chip it in the neutral zone, and they throw it away. Some frustration from Smith. Obviously, he knows he had a screw up there, and back to the power play once again is all, uh, the Mammoth, or. Excuse me, Binghamton, they have a chance to really here to make it a 2-0 hockey game heading into the intermission. Thompson looked to the point for Powell. Powell tried to stop it with a skate, goes underneath, and all the way down to the other end of the ice. Powell behind Joseph, and he'll wait for the Black Bears to group up. Pass to the near side, Thompson, rink wide. And skating in is Binghamton. Pass out to the point, Schultz. Schultz for Powell. Powell has a jump over his stick, able to get back to it with no pressure. Top of the circle, shot on Proudlock, and he's able to cover it with the logo in his glove and blocker. 
Another good save there. And Almira doing a good job of keeping it to the exterior, so that's huge. So Powell with a good opportunity, he's able to walk into the middle, get to the high slot, take a shot, but need more power and you need to get some bodies in front of the net for Browlock. First 30 seconds gone on the power play. Schultz at the point. Far side Powell thought about taking one. Back to Schultz. Schultz does. Proudlock makes the save. It trickled behind him, but he's able to get on top of it with the glove and make the stop. Well, Proudlock goes side to side there and just shows his athletic ability. Able to get across, make a save, find the rebound. I and mean, there's no rebound there because he's just able to find the puck so quickly. So really good saves. He's had a great start. And, but Binghamton already had 17 shots on Golden Knight. Elmira at eight. So See if the power play continues to kick, click away here with a minute 13 left. Another face-off win for the Black Bears. Powell, one-timer, he scores! They're gonna get a deflection in front from Austin Thompson, his 23rd goal of the season. And Binghamton with back-to-back -back power play goals makes it 2-0. Well, I talked about Thompson gonna make an impact. He makes one here on the special teams. Give him his 23th goal of the season, his 44th point. Look at the tip in there, just goes top corner over Proudlock, right off the bar too. So a 2-0 start for the Black Bears closer to the end of the first period. It was just a matter of a time based on how the first 20 minutes have gone. Pikarski for Lambert. Lambert passed through into the offense zone looking for Kyle Stevens out of his cage to play it. Joseph, plays to the far side. Yarwood with Soilus, caught up between their skates. Stevens gonna Walk away with it, center and pass. Joseph able to make the stop, and it's Andrew Logar the other direction. Logar, he'll play one in. Proudlock way out of the net to play it. Fires it off for Pikarski. Pikarski works away from Mac Lewis, pass away for Lambert. Lambert tape to tape, Leeson. Leeson into the offensive zone, loses it at the blue line. Goes by Lewis to the high slot. Him and Lewis battling, and it's going to be poked away for Gavin Yates. Yates, three on three into the offensive zone. Played into the far side corner. Cudmore touches it through to the far side half wall. Soilus looking up for Leeson. Leeson had a stretch too far from him as we have under two minutes remaining in the first period. Boiler drop past Yates. Yates, silky through the offensive zone. And it's up for McGuire, who loses his edge. And Gino D'Angelo going to play it in deep. Proudlock out of the cage, hands off Cudmore. Cudmore worked off the backboards. Samaro's pass intercepted. Kyle Stevens. Stevens, backhands one through. Joseph had a hand raised, no icing. Minute and a half. It'll be Everett Thompson. Thompson, a big hitter here for the Black Bears. A big pickup from the Motor City Rockers. Skates through the neutral zone. Way from McGuire, all the way into the offense zone. Throws one on Proudlock and a glove save. Coming out 118. Shots right now, Zach, 17 to 9 in favor of Binghamton. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's all it's been all Binghamton really so far in this first 20 minutes. And Elmira just needs to get out of this period, head back to the locker room and, and sort out their issues and, and really just improve on it. I think that's one of those things where they need to come out rocking here in the second period and get some shots on that. And they haven't really tested Joseph so far in this contest, but we'll see what happens here with a minute 18. On the last goal. It's Jake Schultz getting his 16th assist of the season. Powell, 24th assist. Gino D'Angelo's pass tipped by McGuire. To the near side, Yolenskis. Yolenskis back into his own zone for Jensen as we hit less than a minute to play. Tom McGuire into the offense zone. Skates to the far side. Circles the cage. Goes for Yolenskis. Yolenskis to the point, Cubmore. Cubmore D to D, Jim Jensen. Jensen fires one on the cage and a stick save by Joseph Cairns into the corner. That pass intercepted in the neutral zone by Cudmore at center ice. He'll fire one in deep. It rolls along the bottom of the wall. And Joseph hands off for D'Angelo. Half a minute remaining in the first period. Two nothing. Binghamton lead on goals by Donald Oliveira and Austin Thompson. 23 seconds left here. Mammoth pressure on the four check. Finds its way into the neutral zone. Thompson, he'll skate all the way back into his own zone. Seems like the Black Bears content with the 2-0 lead. And they'll wait behind Joseph. And just killing time is Thompson. Joseph and Richards having words in front of the net. 
And a pass off Powell, and that'll be the horn after 20 minutes of hockey here at First Arena. The Binghamton Black Bears with two power play goals, the first from Don Oliveri and the second from Austin Thompson gives them a two-nothing lead after 20. Zach, your thoughts on the first period of play? Well, overall, I think Binghamton's just the better team right now. They've shown it with their speed, their skill, and it's definitely a physical hockey game. Elmira's going to need to find that next gear and, and really pick it up overall. But I think it shows. You look at the great A opportunities, a lot to a little compared to Elmira and Binghamton, and the score shows that. So definitely need a better period out of uh, Elmira here next time around. And if you're the Black Braves, you're content with how you're playing and you want to continue that level of hockey. But overall, Thomas Proudlock doing a good job in net. I think Joseph doing a good, good job as well. He just hasn't been tested. And if you're Elmira, you need to get shots on net and, and get some great A opportunities. The Mammoth trailed the port here on Prowlers 2-0 on Saturday night. They came back to win 5-2. We'll see if the Mammoth have a similar result coming out of the locker room at the start of the second period. Shots 19-10 in favor of Binghamton. And we're going to take a quick break here from the first arena press box. For Zach Case, I'm Jake Johnson. We'll be back shortly.
And welcome back to First Arena Mammoth fans as the Big Empty Black Bears hold a 2-0 lead over the Elmira Mammoth as we get set for the second period of play. Zach Case alongside me. I'm Jake Johnson. And Zach, a couple games going on in the FPHL tonight. Port Huron up 3-1 on the Delaware Thunder. Columbus and Mississippi tied at 1. Danbury and Watertown after 20 minutes of play. Still scoreless. Carolina up 1-0 on the Motor City Rockers. And of course here, Binghamton and Elmira 2-0. Zach, what do the Mammoth have to do to come out get some emotion with this team and have a chance to get back in this game. Well, hey, I think you got to move your feet a little bit more. I think right now they're kind of struggling in terms of just finding their, their rhythm and their move. Every time they grab the puck, it's, hey, man, I, I don't know what to do with it. Let me just toss it in the neutral zone. So little points with the puck and maybe uh, find the back of the net here. Obviously, that's the goal at the end of the day. But you got you to gotta really test uh, Joseph right now. I think he's having a really good game to start. And, and he's been all over it. So Taylor Joseph, really good net miner. I think Thomas Proudlock's really kept this game in a 2-0 game. But Binghamton has missed plenty of opportunities. So right now, stay out of the penalty box. Get a, get it one goal to get started. Get, get that zero off the board and just continue to hound away at the defense here for Binghamton. They just look like they're in a better groove. That second line they're starting with uh, here in the second period, they started with that right off the get-go. They just look better. And it's just one of those things where Elmire's going to have to find another layer to their hockey game to find the back of the net. And Zach, last week against Port here on the Mammoth, trailed 2 0. It was Ricard Julenski who out there starting the second period, got some fire underneath the Mammoth, scored the first two goals to tie it up. And then the Mammoth were off running five unanswered goals against the Prowlers. Yeah, so maybe it's the same story here tonight. Have a better, have a second, better second period, have a better third period, and get the ground running. Hey, maybe the first period's not really their mojo, something they could improve on. But overall, hey, if you have a really good second, third period, you get two points and a win. Who cares about what happened in the first period? So we're going to chuck up another 20 minutes here on the board from First Arena as FDHL action back underway here in the second period. Pikarski picks it up in the neutral zone. He'll play one through, picked up by Kyle Powell on his own end. Powell stops between the dashes. Now he'll work his way through the neutral zone. Fire one in deep. As it bangs off the backboards. Pikarski pass up for Tom McGuire. McGuire looking to clear the zone. Schultz throws one back into the offense zone. It works to the far side. Miscommunication. Powell going to dump one in. Delayed off sides. Binghamton going to touch up. And Pikarski. Pass through for McGuire. McGuire into the offense zone. The work by Schultz. Fired into the far side corner. Yulensky's along the half wall. Picks up. He'll look to throw a shot on but fanned on it. And the Black Bears clear. Pikarski picks up the rolling puck. Skeets. To the far side, plays off for Luke Richards. Richards by one defender. Up for Tom McGuire, batted back through again. Pikarski picks up speed into the offense zone. The defenseman skating through, pass off. He'll pick it up, shoots, and a glove save Joseph. Loose out of front, Mertes shoots. Pikarski picks back up through the dash marks. Backhands a shot. That one goes wide. And Powell going to skate out with it. Floats one through the neutral zone. Goes through the legs of Wild down towards Proudlock. Proudlock. Going to guide it off. Wild. Off for Lance Hamilton. Hamilton. His pass. Intercepted and kept in the offense zone. Down low, it's Thompson. Austin Thompson, one goal already tonight. Centering pass. Pikarski pokes through. Oliveri, he shoots that one. Trickles wide. And it will be out to the point. JT Walters. Plays one down low, Lopez. Lopez shoots that one wide. All the way out into the neutral zone. Foot race, Luke Richards and Chad Lopez. Richards by one. He looked to center it. Pass off Lance Hamilton. And it's going to be a whistle. Luke Richards heading to the sin bin. It's going to be an interference penalty possibly here. He didn't grab the puck. Decided to take the body instead. And Hamilton came in and scooped it up. So the parade of the penalty box continues. Gets him on an elbowing call. So two minutes. Chucked up on the board. Penalty killer. Presented by Vincenzo's Pizzeria. Had some good pizza from there today. Really good pizza as I was waiting in Subway. Uh, hey, you need to find dinner every once in a while. Two for three so far in the power play is Binghamton. See if they can make it. Three for four. And a good clear, though, from Elmira. Dalton Anderson plays one 200 feet down. Ten seconds in to the penalty. Already two goals, as Zach mentioned here, on the power play. It's going to be Cam Yarwood into the offense zone. He'll stop right at the blue line. Down the left wing. Plays off Oliveri. Oliveri. Cross ice Yarwood. 
Yarwood and Oliveri gonna switch spots. Yarwood, he'll send one in. Shot, scored! Cam Yarwood on the power play. It's three straight power play goals for the Black Bears. And it's three nothing, Binghamton. Well, Yarwood just takes advantage of time and space. Mark that as sixth goal of the season and his 28th point. And he was given all the time and all the space he needed. He walked in, clap bomb, and a score. Make it 3-0. And if I'm Dolan Anderson, I don't know why I'm stepping out of the shooting lane there and giving him that time and space. Of course, Proudlock able to see that. But if I'm Anderson, you got to pressure and at least get the body and the stick in the shooting lane there. So unfortunately, a 3-0 start here for the second period. 17-32 remaining and the Black Bears taking advantage of the man, op man advantage opportunity and those are making impact so far in the scoreline. This game would be 0-0, zero, zero, a five-on-five five hockey, but Binghamton making the most of the odd man advantage. Creates a two-on-one here. Kyle Stevens, he's gonna walk down low. Soilus passed through the blue paint. Out to the point. Cross ice, Soilus picks up. Works by D'Angelo. Shot sent out in front. It's going to be Soyuz in the near side corner. Pass out for Leeson. Leeson to Jensen. Jensen fires one. Pad save by Taylor Joseph. Binghamton looks to clear, and they will as it goes underneath the skates of Jim Jensen. Blake Cutmore in his own zone picking up. Pressure from Thompson. Fires one through the neutral zone for Kyle Stevens. Stevens has Leeson. Pass down low for Leeson. Leeson looked to center it, and it's played wide. Kept at the point, Jim Jensen. He'll fire one on. That's blocked in front, never reached Joseph. Parker to the far side for D'Angelo. D'Angelo gonna skate out with it. He's got three on two. Everett Thompson, pass through for Parker, jumps off his stick, and he'll play it down low. Jim Jensen cuts off the passing lane down for Tate Leeson on the far side. Leeson floats one through, and it's kept at the point by Kyle Powell. Powell in the offense zone. Wires one in deep. Now it's Austin Thompson. Thompson looks to center it. Noah Wild plays it off his skates. And it's poked through. Tate Leeson with Stavros Soilis. And Leeson going to dump it in. Mammoth go for a change. 16 minutes remaining here in the second. 3-0 Binghamton lead after a quick power play goal. Noah Wild to Justin Schmidt. Schmidt's pass. Doesn't reach Stevens. And into the offense zone is Powell. Powell dragged by. Shoots at a glove save. Proud lock. Another really good opportunity from Powell. He was involved. He got an assist earlier on in the contest after a tip shot on, I think, the first power play goal, maybe the second, back in the first period. But making an impact, picks up a turnover in the neutral zone and just using some speed and open space. And that's one thing Elmire hasn't done is really cracked down on the space that they're giving the Blackbirds so far. So 15.46 remaining, another defensive zone faceoff for Elmira. Tom McGuire going to play one through into the neutral zone. That pass finds Don Oliveira at the center ice logo. Pass up for Chad Lopez. Lopez walking in, shoots Proudlock with a pad save. Really good defensive stick there by the defenseman to get back on the second effort after he got beat by Lopez. Two on two for the man with the pass for Dalton Anderson. Joseph going to come out of the cage to play it. McGuire fires one back in deep. Kyle Powell has it to his tape. Pressure from McGuire in front of Joseph, and Powell going to wait off. Pass to the far side for Lopez. It's going to be... Lopez skating in with a pass for Schultz. Batted out by Tyson Lambert. Pass through for Luke Richards. Richards can't have the puck. Miscommunication with him and Yulensky creates an opportunity here for Jake Schultz. Schultz walking in. Shoots that one, goes high and into the netting. Went right off the crossbar there on the shot. It was another turnover and a miscue once again from the Mammoth in the neutral zone. And they're not controlling the middle of the ice so far tonight. We're going to go under the media timeout here as we're under 15 minutes here in the second period. Big hit. Just one of those things where they need to have a better game. Proudlock keeping it close, but it's another man advantage goal early in the second period that leads to a 3-0 margin now, and that's gonna be tough to climb out of. They've done it in the past, and of course, last weekend they were able to come back from behind after two goal deficit, but hey, it's pretty tough against the Black Bear team. So as we have 14.57 remaining in the second, shots 22 to 12 right now in favor of Binghamton. Mike Cosentino and MJ Merkel trying to fire up the group on the bench. A big crowd here tonight, and this Mammoth team so far through 25 minutes of hockey letting down the home faithful. Yeah, I mean, you want to say it's a big crowd tonight, probably because the Black Bears only 45 minutes down the road, of course. We'll head there 
tomorrow night. That's going to be a packed barn in a former AHL arena, so very excited for that one. Of course, tune, on, tune in for that one, folks. But back-to-back -back home games, of course, the Black Bears in full force tonight. I said it earlier in the first period. And there had to be a Black Bear chant going on. He probably picked it up on our microphone. But 14.57 left to go here as they line up for another defensive zone faceoff on the right side of Prowlock. Cudmore, plays to the far side, looking for Tristan Mock. Played to the half wall, Luke Richards. Richards gonna float one through into the neutral zone. JT Walters catches it, plays it down to his tape. Away from Lance Hamilton. Logar plays it down, Cudmore through the neutral zone, looking for Luke Richards. Nice. Goes by Yarwood, Yarwood plays one through. Jim Jensen, the first one on it. Lance Hamilton swipes it into the offensive zone. JT Walters now with a D-to-D pass from Yarwood. Walters plays through for Mac Lewis. Lewis can't get by Cudmore. Delayed offsides here on Binghamton. They'll regroup. Jensen, D to D, Cudmore. Cudmore fires one off the backboards for Lance Hamilton. Hamilton up for Luke Richards. Richards going to chip one in. Flying in is Tristan Mock. Mock on the backhand to the half wall. Spins away from one. Throws a shot on net. Joseph able to make the save. And it's sent out to the blue line. Luke Richards going to play one back in deep. Mock with pressure from Yarwood. He's taken off the puck. It'll be JT Walters. Up for Gavin Yates. Yates past the red line into the offensive zone. He'll dangle by one. A beauty of a dangle, but couldn't get the shot off. Proudlock out to clear with a stick. Yates shoots. He'll fan. He's got Proudlock moving all over the crease. Out to the point. Shot on by Boylar and smothered by Proudlock. That was a filthy toe drag from Yates. What a play there. Unable to get a good shot on it. And then he comes back on the back door and fans on a beauty with a wide open net so really good chances from the Black Bears once again no finish in five on five hockey but hey the three goals on the man advantage making the difference so far this one story of the game as Binghamton continues to ride the hot streak on the power play. Gavin Yates a familiar face here at first arena played two seasons for Elmira 21 career points when the enforcers were still around Boylar at the point, going to play one back in deep. Stevens able to clear the zone. Foot race now with Gino D'Angelo and Tate Leeson and an icing. Just one of those things, poor puck management from Elmira. Unable to find sticks in the neutral zone on the breakout. Need to improve there, so we'll see if they can pick up on it. As another faceoff now on the left side of Prouda. Mammoth having trouble tonight on the faceoffs. 13-22 remaining in the second. Another faceoff win by Binghamton. Stick save proud lock goes high off the glass. And they're going to say that one went out of play. Just six seconds in. We'll have another faceoff once again in the offensive zone for the Blackbirds. We'll see if they can win it. But right now, 13-16 remaining. And Amara just needs to break the ice here and get one in the back of the net and start figuring out Joseph. They haven't been able to do that so far. Off the face off, another Black Bear win. Easton sent flying down, a shot that blocked a few bodies in front. D'Angelo, down low, Brett Parker. Parker works to the near side, skates out with it. Stops in the face off circle as he puts on the brakes for Samaro. Samaro out to the point, D'Angelo. D'Angelo, D to D, Boilar. Boilar gonna wrap it right back in deep. Parker for Samaro. Gonna be Justin Samaro, pass out Brett Parker. Parker gonna skate down low with it. Look to wrap it around, shot on block. Schmidt sends a body down. And it's to the far side. Tate Leeson has that one bounce over him. And that's Josh Newberg who's headed to the bench. Samaro, down low, Parker. Parker shoots, Proudlock had it go between his legs but he got enough of it. Off the skates of Leeson. Lopez takes a body there from Schmidt. He's throwing bodies all over the place. Shot on, a stick save by Proudlock. Picked up by Leeson. Leeson floats one back through for Stevens. Foot race, he's gonna win. Loses it to Schultz, whose body's all over the place right now. 12-10 remaining in the second. Chad Lopez. Up for Oliveri. Oliveri behind on the backhand, shoots on. That one goes over the cage. Schmidt and Oliveri now getting into it. Two veteran players. Up for Yelensky. Yelensky drags by one. Pass up for McGuire. McGuire skating in the offense zone. Plays for Yelensky. Yelensky loses the puck. Sent down to the ice by Thompson. And the Black Bears will take over. 
Jake Schultz through center ice. Shoots on proud lock. That one goes in and out of his chest. Off for Jensen. Jensen to the far side. Caught up in the skate to Ulenski. Ulenski's off the wall. Powell shoots. Tipped by Lopez over the net. We have an upcoming penalty. Powell down on the ice. And they're going to get a high stick on Jim Jensen. Well, Jensen's trying to say that he flopped. And it was actually earlier in the contest where, or earlier in the shift, someone got a, he got it high up top. And right now there's a towel to the face down on the bench for the Black Bears. And that's what they're claiming. The assistant coach was yelling at the referee from the bench. But another power play here as the penalty kill comes back out for the Mammoth with 11.26 remaining here in the second. Second period, it's a four minute penalty, a double minor. So that means there was blood drawn, a, maybe a vicious play. So Jensen will sit for four minutes and we'll see if the Mammoth or the Binghamton Black Bears can make this a 5-0 hockey game here in the second. Powell putting his best acting on display. As coaching staff pointing over to one of the players on the Mammoth side, looks like he's got blood drawn too. So it's getting vicious out there, Jacob. It is. Now it's going to be a four minute power play for a team that's already scored all their goals on the power play. Yates to the far side. It'll be Yarwood. Played down low for Yates. Yates in the circle, fans on the pass, and Anderson with the backhand plays it all the way down. Good, good clear to start this long power play. As we'll see what Almira does here. Pretty, pretty frustrated right now. Of course, the physicality amping up. It's, it's going to be a long rest of the contest and a long game tomorrow night, too. Yates by one, but loses it past Lambert. Anderson with another good clear. This one just reaches the red line at center ice. Oliveri in his own zone. Pressure from Kyle Stevens. Stevens chasing after Oliveri as he skates through center ice. Picks up speed into the offense zone. Plays to the far side, and they'll get an offside on Binghamton with 3.07 left on the penalty. Yeah, we'll see good first minute so far from the penalty kill, making sure to keep everyone out, and that's huge right now. And obviously, you got to be able to clear the puck. They've done a good job doing that. As the penalty kill unit, another group comes out. It's some more five-on-four hockey here in the second period at First Arena. Off the face off, it's picked up by Kyle Powell, who seems to be okay back on the ice. Pass for Schultz, Schultz down low, cleared up by Schmidt. Pass out in front, Lopez plays to the near side for Brett Parker. Parker circling for Powell with a one-timer, save Proudlock to the far side. Jake Schultz picks up centering pass, and that shot goes over. Kept by Lopez to the point, Powell, Powell, and Lopez play catch. He'll work in, and a shot that goes wide and whistles its well all the way down into the Black Bears defense zone. But it's going to be Kyle Powell with speed into the offensive zone. Powell with one goal already tonight. Plays down low for Lopez. Lopez for Parker in the slot. He shoots save. Proud lock. That clear bounces off the body of Parker, kept by Schultz. Schultz for Powell. Powell the far side. Schultz looked to tee one up. He's going to keep it on his tape. Pass for Powell. Powell handcuffed. Now we're going to come out of the zone. And Powell goes to Yarwood. He'll head to the bench as Yarwood comes on. Pass picked up by Schmidt. Schmidt skates into his own zone, going the wrong way. His clear off the backside of Cudmore. And Noah Wilde able to get it out of the zone. Less than two minutes remaining here on the penalty. It's going to be Gavin Yates behind the net. Skates by Taylor Joseph as we approach the nine minute mark in period number two. Yates through center ice into the offense zone. Drop past Somero for Oliveri. Oliveri shoots and a shoulder saved by Proudlock and he's sent down. Now Noah Wild, some pushing and shoving with Mac Lewis and Justin Somero. Protecting his netminder with a minute 27 left on the Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill in less than nine in the second frame. Well, Proudlock came out very far out of the crease to snag that one midair like a like an outfielder almost. And he was kind of exposed there and definitely took a tumble. So good good whistle though. Of course, heading into the media timeout under 10 minutes of play here in the second period. We're just over halfway and a minute 27 
left to go here. And we'll see what Elmira can do here to get really get out of the uh, penalty kill. I thought overall it's been a good penalty kill so far. Yeah, you know, Zach, you kind of said it perfectly. Binghamton, four power play opportunities today. They've scored on three of them. This being their longest power play of the game in that first two minutes, they did have a few good chances, but nothing compared to what they've had in their first three or four power plays. Oh, definitely. That just comes down to being able to clear the puck and keep everything to the ex exterior, which is huge. So that's a big thing. And right now, Amira's kind of figured out this power play, and Black Bears are going to need to work around the, pu the puck around a little bit more in order to get some more shots on Prowlock. And he's done a solid jo job so far in between the pipes tonight. Obviously, having him back is huge. Shot totals here in the second period, 12 to three in favor of Binghamton. This Mammoth team has killed off the first two and a half minutes of the four minute penalty to Jim Jensen for high sticking. They're still in this game, just down three nothing, but they need a quick goal here. They need a goal to end the second period to get some momentum into period number three. Totally, and, and right now, just looking down on the ice sheet, two captains and the referees talking it over and don't know what that's about. It may be a missed call looking at the physicality, the high sticking, and referees will have a conversation before they head back to the faceoff. Faceoff's gonna be outside this time in the neutral zone. Right in front of the Black Bear bench is Stevens gonna walk in for that one. It's gonna be Yates and Kyle Stevens. Lambert with a push in the faceoff circle to Mac Lewis. Yates comes away with the puck into the offense zone. He'll go down. It's Pikarski away with the puck. Pikarski in his own zone. Lambert looks to clear. Caught up in a few bodies. Pikarski rims one along the glass and heads all the way down to the Binghamton zone. Just a minute remaining here on the penalty. Oliveri runs into Yarwood. They're able to retain the puck. Pass for Yarwood. Yarwood back for Yates. Risky pass there, but Yates able to come away with it. He'll skate in the offense zone. First Somero, the Morrisville product goes to the point for Oliveri. Far side Yarwood. Yarwood with a goal tonight as well for Somero. Somero cross ice, played off the boards by Oliveri. And they're, they'll circle the zone. Oliveri thought about a one-timer. First Somero. Somero able to get to it. Less than 30 seconds left here. Pass for Mac Lewis. Lewis to the point, Oliveri. Far side Yarwood. Yarwood gonna circle. Drop pass, Oliveri, Yarwood, Samaro. Samaro's pass off the body of Pikarski. Yates skating down low with it for Yarwood. Oh, Jim Jensen out of the box in three seconds. Yates circles, shoots, that one's wide. And the Mammoth able to kill a four minute penalty here at First Arena. No Wilds pass picked off. Here comes Gavin, excuse me, that's Don Oliveri with a drive that Proudlock makes a save on. Pikarski skating out with it. Redirects into his own end for Lambert. Pikarski body off the boards by Oliveri. Things getting physical. Don Oliveri with one goal. Shoots. Proudlock makes a save and holds on. Thompson and Wild some pushing and shoving. Wild looks like he's going to shred the gloves. Throws down Thompson. And the official goes down on top of him. And Noah Wild gonna head to the sin bin. Getting some energy here at the first arena crowd. Hey, that's what you like to see if you know a while. Give the fans into it. But now you gotta take advantage of it. And this goes up for a minor penalty. That's not the good thing though. You wanna get both players in there. And I don't think they're gonna get anyone for the Black Bears. It might go up for a minor penalty. I can't imagine board. you don't put Thompson in. I know there was some pushing and shoving, but he came with the cross check near the end before he was sent down to the ice. And it looks like he's gonna get away scotch free. And Binghamton, they're going to get another power play. And at some point, you, if you're at home and you're like kind of just listening, go take a look at the stat sheet. Things uh, on the stat sheet in the penalty column, one-sided here tonight. Yeah, totally. And we talk about the parade to the penalty box. You can't do that. And 
With 6.58 remaining, two minutes up on the board, another minor penalty, this time for roughing on Noah Wild. So two minutes up on the board, and well, you look at, you look, Jake, you look at the score, it, it shows with the power plays tonight. Powell shoots, and that one saved by Proudlock. He'll smother it between the post and his glove, and, and Zach, you're right, you look at it, just one penalty issued tonight to Don Oliveri, and the rest, it's all mammoth. And, it's not really where you want to be seeing your logo on the FPHL website. Yeah, you don't want to see that there. And obviously, three power play goals is going to make a difference in this hockey game. And it has so far. Noah Wild still going in the box. He's talking to a guy across the bench. It looks like Thompson. Brett Parker to the far side. Stops along the dashers to the point. Schultz. Schultz for Powell. Powell pass out in front. Touches it through for Parker. And a slow glove save there for Proudlock. It was a shot that Parker got off the heel of his stick, but good job by Thomas Proudlock to stay with that one. Yeah, Parker couldn't get a lot on it, so we'll see what happens here. But the rest of this contest is going to be a chippy one as that. And usually after every whistle, teams getting into it around the goaltenders. And there's been a couple times where the Blackbirds have gone a little too close to Proudlock in terms of what Elmira thinks you can do to touch a goaltender. So we'll see here. Shot on, Proudlock able to get enough of it. Puck pushed wide to the point, Powell. Powell picks it up on the backhand for Chad Lopez. Lopez pass down low. Thompson to the point, Powell. Far side, Schultz. Schultz pass out in front, Lopez. Lopez shoots. That one blocked by the skates of Jensen out wide. And finds Proudlock right in front, and he'll freeze it. At 6.07 remaining in the second. Another good opportunity there, but all the shots coming from the exterior, and Talk about shots, 17 this period for Binghamton. They had 19 last period, so Almaro held a three right now. They were able to get 10 in the first, so. Face off out to the point for Schultz. Schultz threw one on net, bounces through a few bodies, picked up by Lopez. Lopez looks to wrap it around, can't get it through Proudlock. Proudlock makes the rebound save. Thompson, he shoots, smothered, and stopped by Thomas Proudlock. Proudlock able to spread the legs, go uh, pipe to pipe, get across and make a save on the wraparound chance. It came loose out front. He was able to poke it around too. So really good saves by Thomas Proudlock, keeping this to a 3-0 hockey game. So 53 seconds left on the wild penalty, 5-51 remaining in the second. It's a face-off win here for the Black Bears. A drive by Yarwood blocked. He's able to get through it through center ice. Wraps one through for Oliveri. Oliveri, pass, finds clean ice, and it's Maratea stretched up for Stevens. Stevens into his own zone, looking for Tom McGuire. Yates dangles by one. Another toe drag from Yates. Pass off Mac Lewis. Lewis drop pass Samaro. Samaro to the near side, Yates. Yates down low, loses control of that one. Maratea, pass up for Tom McGuire. It's going to be Samaro coming over the puck for Oliveri. He patrols the blue line. Samara along the half wall on the near side. Oliveri plays it down with his glove. Cross ice Yates. It's going to be wild out of the box. Another successful penalty kill here for Omaira. Yarwood for Samara. Samara shoots and he scores. It's the first professional goal for Justin Samara and he makes it 4 0 as the penalty expires. Well, it was a good pass and an even better finish. And Samaro buries that one. The Morrisville State College grad gets his first in the FPHL in his first game. What a rip there, as you saw on the replay. Top shelf where Mala hides the cookies, and he makes it a 4-0 hockey game as the power play expires. You might as well chalk it up as another power play goal. No wild. Didn't even get in the zone yet. Yeah, and you look at the shots column, Zach, as we hit under five minutes to play. 38 to 13 in favor of Binghamton. And you got to imagine when you have a man up the entire game, you're going to lead in the shots department. And hey, if you're a man down for a good chunk of the hockey game, you're only going to get three shots on goal here in the second period. So Elmira has a lot to work to do as they head back in the locker room in just a couple minutes. Newberg with a shot on, and it's guided in the corner by Proudlock. He'll leave off for Cudmore. Cubmore finds a streaking Lance Hamilton. Hamilton in the offense zone. Drop pass there for Richards. Richards to the backhand, works below the goal line. Centering passing for Hamilton, he fans for Mock. 
Mock in the face-off circle of the point, Jensen. Jensen shoots on, save Joseph. Picked up, shot on, and a glove save by Mock. And some more pushing and shoving after the whistle. It's Boilar and Richards. Yeah, Mock with a good shot, but an even better save by Joseph there. But a 4-0 hockey game right now, and Joseph the difference maker, but four shots on goal for Elmar is not gonna get it done. 14 total so far. As we head under the five minute mark and another media timeout as everyone catches their legs and the coaching staff talks it over with both teams. A recap on the Cam Yarwood goal, the power play goal, Don Oliveri with his second point of the night. And Justin Samero actually got his first career pro point on the Yarwood goal with an assist. And then Samero, his first ever goal from Yarwood and Yates. And that gives Binghamton a 4-0 to zero lead here at First Arena. So a two-point night for the kid. Fresh out of college. Plenty of hockey games down at Morrisville State. Of course, playing in the Suniac. And now playing here for the Black Bears. A short road trip from Morrisville to Binghamton. And now he finds himself with two professional hockey points. Here in the second period, 4-16 remaining. A 4-0 hockey game here as Binghamton leads Elmira Mammoth. At First Arena, of course, a home and home series. So tomorrow night we'll be on the road with the Mammoths as they take on the Black Bears for a rematch. And right now, Binghamton making a good case for another two points and staying in second place in the Empire Division. No Wild having a conversation on the near side with Kyler Spies, one of the referees for tonight. And we hit 4-16 remaining in the second. Mammoth offense his own faceoff. They haven't seen a lot of time in this zone most of this second period. D'Angelo to the near side, pass for Logar. Logar takes one body there from Noah Wild. And in the offense zone, Thompson with a shot. That one guides wide. So he just throws one body down with D'Angelo. He'll take one off the glass to the far side from Everett Thompson. And Leeson will pick up with some clean ice in front of him. Leeson down the right wing into the offense zone. Still with it on his tape. Backhands a shot. Joseph makes the save. It bounces out in front to the point for Schmidt. Schmidt throws one on net. That one never reached Joseph into the near side corner. It's Logar. Logar going to play one into the offensive zone. Proudlock out of his cage to play it. Wraps it around for Pikarski. The D-man skates into the offensive zone. He'll jump one through, and it's poked off his stick by Chad Lopez. Lopez... Plays went off the boards for Don Oliveri. Oliveri in the offense zone, two on one. He'll walk in, shoot, that one goes up and over. Oliveri thinks it's a goal. And there's no recognition of that. We get a replay of it here. That one just hit off the crossbar. I'm not sure what Don Oliveri was thinking or what hockey game he was watching. Oh, hey, it went right off the crossbar and he thought he scored. 3-11 remaining while the offensive zone face off. A really good shot. Oliveri already has one tonight. But hey, Binghamton looking to add more. Pile it on. Open the floodgates. Because the goals are heading in the back of the net for the Black Bears tonight. To the point, JT Walters. Luke Richards without a stick. Puts pressure on Yarwood. Luke Richards kicks it through. Now a pass for Lance Hamilton. It's like the FIFA World Cup. Hamilton, pass out in front. He'll backhand a shot. Richards gets a new twig, centers one. And wraps to the near side. Cam Yarwood, unable to get by Lambert, takes a body there from Mock. Mock and Yarwood, some pushing and shoving between the two. As Yarwood with a huge shot on Tristan Mock, and that's gonna draw some hands. It's funny, the referee that was in the zone with him didn't make the call, it was the guy that was ahead of the play who made the call. So Yarwood heads to the box after tossing Mock like a ragdoll. And we'll have another power play for the Mammoth. They're 0 for 1 tonight as Binghamton 3 for 6. If, if you want any shot of a comeback here, Zach, you have to score on this power play. Well, you got to get one before you head into the locker You right have game. to. You have you gotta to. Put one What's the objective of winning a hockey game? Scoring more than your opponent. Right now, Binghamton is doing just that. It, if you're the guys in the, in the green tonight, 
You got to get one past Joseph, and this is an opportunity, best opportunity they're going to have all night long to make it a hockey game. It's 4 0. They've scored three goals in the period before. We'll see what they can do here with a two minute minor penalty. Tate Leeson around the cage, pass to the point, Soilus. Soilus for Kyle Stevens, who works on the far side. Cross ice pass picked up by Tate Leeson. Leasing in a circle with it. Skates to the high slot. Couldn't get a shot off, and it's poked free by Newberg. And that one going to clear the zone. You could say that's possibly a hook there from Prowl, but hey, he got away with it. Really smart job in the stick lift, and they get a clear from it. Good start to the penalty killing unit so far. Tate Leeson loses it, but right behind is Luke Richards. Pass through. Leeson jumps by Powell. Top of the circle. Holds on to it. Picked off by Thompson. Thompson going to clear the zone. Another big clear there from the Black Bears. As we approach just a minute five left on the power play. Picked off by Brett Parker. Parker in the offense zone. He'll walk down. He throws a shot on Proudlock. He makes a stick save. And he had Mac Lewis wide open on the back door. Tristan Mock into the offense zone. Down the far side. Stops past Walters. Walters battling with him. Walters crying for a penalty. He's not going to get one. Mock to the point for Soilus. Down low for Mock. 35 seconds left on the power play. Mock for Soilus. Soilus going to walk in, shoots. It's blocked. McGuire circles the net. He'll throw one on net. Joseph makes the save, and he holds on to it. Now Soilus and Walters. Some pushing and shoving there. Bear hugging below the goal line. As we have just a tick above one minute remaining in period number two. Well, they got guys getting together on the, the ice. And then actually, Jake, I was staring down right in front of us at the stands. We had a, a mammoth fan getting it after with Yarwood in the bubbly box. He was standing right on the stairs yelling at Yarwood. There was a couple of Black Bear fans who were like, hey, buddy, look at the scoreboard. Yarwood was telling him, go suit up and get out here. What a crowd here tonight. A minute and one second remaining here at First Arena in the second period. As now, the man have come in for a faceoff on the left side, far side corner, and to the right of Joseph. Faceoff won by Powell. Powell gonna play one all the way down and reaches just before Thomas Proudlock, Blake Cudmore. Skates to the near side. Pass up, looking for Lance Hamilton. Hamilton unable to get to it. It's below the goal line, Powell. Powell wraps around through. Yarwood out of the box in four seconds. And a successful penalty kill here tonight for the Black Bears. They're two for two. Tristan Mock into the offense zone for Luke Richards. Richards through the high slot. He shoots. That one blocked in front. It's picked up by Andrew Logar. Logar two on two with Jake Schultz. Jim Jensen on the guard. And Lewis taken down from behind by Mock. It's going to be a slash. And the Mammoth going to go back to the box with 16 seconds left. Well, I'm sure there's a couple parades tomorrow for St. Patty's Day. And right now the Mammoth got it started early with their own parade to the penalty box. The seventh minor penalty of the game. It's going to be for Trishan Mock, who pulls down Mac Lewis on the rush there. We'll have another power play with 16 seconds remaining. Faceoff's going to be on the right side of Proudlock, slashing the penalty. And the penalty kill unit comes back out, presented by Vincenzo's Pizzeria. So 16 seconds left. Uh, one clear here for Almira Wood. Seal away period number two, but it's kept in for Gavin Yates. Yates with 10. Well, very with a drive. That one plenty wide over the net. The puck going to roll all the way back into the Black Bears zone. They're going to let the period end. And after 40 minutes, the Black Bears get two in period number two. And they lead four to zero. And Zach, three of those power play goals. The fourth, you basically could chalk it up as a power play goal. It's all Binghamton tonight, and that's really all it has been. Well, they got a lot of work to do. In this third period, they're gonna have 18 minutes to think about it before the next 20 minute stands up, but the physicality is a lot out there right now. These two teams not really having uh, a good time together, and right now it's showing four, basically four power play goals for Binghamton. That's the difference maker right now. A minute 44 left to go on the mock penalty once we come back in the third period. 
We're going to take a quick break here from the first arena press box. The Elmire Mammoth Trail, the Binghamton Black Bears, 4-0. to zero. For Zach Case, I'm Jake Johnson. We'll be right back here on the Elmire Mammoth Mixler and Elmire Mammoth YouTube.
Good evening and welcome back to First Arena. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Forgot to mention this in the start of the game, but if you want to get a chance at some of the sweaters that the Mammoth are wearing tonight, the auction live on Dash.com. We have the link on our Facebook as well as our Instagram and Twitter. So take a look at those and get in on some pretty cool jerseys that the Mammoth are wearing. They'll also be signed right off the back of your favorite Mammoth players. Jake Johnson alongside me, Zach Case, and Zach, the Mammoth, it's been all Binghamton this game, and, and they're really looking to end this third period uh, in a positive fashion to either try and make their way back into this game or get something going for tomorrow night. Hey, and honestly, if you're the Mammoth, it's, it's a good start. You've got, you got two periods down. You're heading in into a third period where you're just looking to get two points, stay out of the mess, stay out of the, any of the boo-ha-has that do occur, and make sure that... Elmira does not get back into this hockey game. And if you're Elmira, you got to score a goal in the first two minutes, honestly. First couple of shifts, bear it down, get some goals going, and make sure you don't go to the box. you got to make sure you, you're playing and you're healthy for tomorrow night. Stay out of any of the shenanigans. But at the end of the day, the physicality is going to amp up here, and I'm ready for some fights. I, I think it's bound to happen. We've already seen a couple. Noah Wild took down a man earlier. We'll see if... We get an actual fight here in the third, but hey, 20 minutes up on the board and we're ready to go. Scores around the FPHL quick. It looks like Port Huron was pretty upset about the result on Saturday night. They are all over the Delaware Thunder, eight to one. Columbus with a one goal lead over the Mississippi Seawolves. Motor City trailing by one to the Carolina Thunderbirds and Watertown with two power play goals to end the second period. They're up two nothing on the Danbury Hattricks. Mammoth fans hoping for a Danbury comeback in that game and of course 4 nothing here the Mammoth going to start this period on the penalty kill they've been on the penalty kill for a majority of this game something they're pretty used to uh, in this one only two penalties called to Binghamton tonight yeah total of 14 or no 16 minutes on the penalty kill so far it's an evening but for right now we're about 20 minutes up on the board another PK here for a minute and 41 seconds in the third period underway here at first arena so off the face-off, it's back in the Binghamton zone. Oliveri going to leave it off for Gavin Yates. Yates down the right wing. Into the offense zone, right into the high slot. It's batted off his stick to the far side, Justin Samaro. Samaro potted his first career pro goal in the first period, excuse me, in the second period. Oliveri thought about a one-timer. He's going to hold it. Yarwood does. Shot saved by Proudlock, and he'll freeze it 30 seconds into the period. Well, it's Mac Lewis sitting right on the doorstep, too, ready to go and pounce on any rebounds, but Prowlock able to get the glove over it. Looking at the shot from the second period, 21 for Binghamton and only six for Elmira. You're not going to win hockey games with six shots on goals in 20 minutes. Part of that is because of the penalty go, like we talked about, being out there for a majority of the contest, but hey, you got to get some shots and you got to start somewhere. Yarwood able to keep it in at the blue line. Pass right out in front for Yates. Yates walking in. He should try to go up high. Bats out of the air. Finds Tom McGuire. McGuire with a breakaway. Yarwood chasing him. McGuire to the offense zone. He looked to move by Yarwood. He's taken off the puck. But he killed some precious time here. Yarwood almost lined up McGuire. That would have been a huge open ice hit. Schultz into the offense zone. And Lambert going to play a high off the glass down to the tape of Yates. Yates into his own zone. And he'll skate back behind his netminder. Just 30 seconds left here on the Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill. Yate lost it momentarily, able to get back. Pass up looking for Austin Thompson in front of the Mammoth bench. He's leveled by Tyson Lambert. Now it's him and Thompson going at it. Kyle Stevens looking to drag for it. It finds Chad Lopez. Lopez looked to drag by Schmidt. It'll be Mock out of the box in 15. Played to the far side. Tyson Lambert skating on. Lambert floats one through. It finds Tate Leeson with some open ice. Tate Leeson with a breakaway. He shoots. He rings the iron. Mock out of the box. And the Mammoth return back to full strength. Brett Parker with speed. He'll fan on the shot. Throw one through the blue paint. Schultz going to dump it right back in deep. Lopez off the back of the netting. Godmore hampered from behind. Hands off for Schmidt. Schmidt. To the backhand down the far side, up for Soilus. Soilus through for Mock. Mock, that is just too far from him, and it's a three on two the other way. Lopez, pass down low, Thompson. Thompson to the backhand, saved, proud lock. And that puck goes out of play at 17 46. 
That was a really good opportunity there from Thompson, but even a better opportunity at the other end, Tate Leeson ringing the bell right off the post. He beats Joseph, but he's unable to chuck a one up on that scoreboard. Still a 4-0 hockey game here at First Arena. Another offensive zone faceoff coming up for Binghamton here now on the far side corner. That was the best offensive opportunity we've seen from the Mammoth in 25, 30 minutes. And Tate Leeson was inches from giving the Mammoth a goal on the scoreboard. They'll skate into their offense zone. It's Thompson, the pass for Andrew Logar. Logar up for Josh Newberg. Newberg into the offense zone. He'll throw one on Proudlock. That one goes wide, all the way back out in the neutral zone. McGuire tries to dance by D'Angelo. He's held up. That's going to bring a penalty. Gino D'Angelo is going to go to the sin bin for interference. Well, here's another chance to put a one-up on the scoreboard and start to inch your way back into this hockey game. Another power play here. 0 for 2 on the man so far this evening. And on the other side, Binghamton obviously 3 for 7. Basically getting four power play goals as the last one just barely expired. Now they'll send out the power play here. It's going to be Dalton Anderson for the faceoff. Jensen on the left side point. And looks like... Christian Mock on the right side points to a forward playing defense. So, and then McGuire, Jalinas. Off the faceoff, it's all the way down to Thomas Proudlock. He'll come out of the cage. Hands off for Jim Jensen. The 38 year old. Pass through for Tristan Mock. Mock with speed. Pass Jelenski's into the offense zone. He shoots, it goes high. McGuire able to play it right back in deep. Mock for McGuire. McGuire waiting with it on his stick. He'll circle. Pass out Anderson. Anderson shoots. It's blocked by Thompson. Mammoth retained possession to the point Jensen. Jensen down low looking for McGuire. McGuire pass Mock. McGuire sends sliding down. A shot saved by Taylor Joseph. And Jake Schultz clears that one down. Taking a stick up high was Tristan Mock. Where's the puck? No idea where the puck is, but Tristan Mock with blood dripping down his face. And he's going to head right to the locker room. A lot of blood for Tristan Mock. Mike Cosentino and MJ Merkel beside themselves that there's no high stick because you don't just start instantly bleeding like that. Yeah, there's something that's obviously got to happen. It's either the puck or the stick. And... Because the puck's no longer on the ice surface, I have to say it's going to be the stick. So, we we'll the ice surface and crew coming out and uh, cleaning up the ice, scraping that away. Both captains talking to the referees. And because blood was drawn, it would be a double minor. So we would have a five on three hockey game for a minute, nine seconds, then three more minutes of minor or of five on four hockey. But the referees have just not had their, or they just haven't been on the Elmira side all evening. I mean, this is a clear, concise, obvious. Well, there's evidence, you know, like, <laughs> innocent until proven guilty, there's evidence. And it's blood from a guy that's in the locker room right now, probably hosing himself off in the sink with a Gatorade towel to his face. That poor Gatorade towel is going to be on a commission. Hopefully the jersey's okay to whoever's winning it. It's going to be blood stains on a game board. Authentic right there. And honestly, Mike Cosentino, he doesn't look happy on the bench right now, so it doesn't Jake. look like anything is being called, which, again, I'm baffled. Jake, if, if I'm a coach, I'm baffled and pretty upset. I don't think I would be happy in this situation. You're down 4-0. You're not getting a double minor called your way. There's evidence of a guy bleeding for the second time tonight. They called the referees earlier over in the game and said, hey, man, look at my guy bleeding. What are you going to do about this? And the referee said, ah, I don't know, man. Walks away, skates away. Same thing here. There's clearly blood on the ice because we got a guy scraping it from somewhere. He's got a shovel to scrape. There's clearly something going on. It's even crazier because the officiating crew is helping clean up the blood. This one, this one, this is one of the weirder ones that I've seen all year. The fact that it's not a penalty. But I will say, I would like to take us back a couple weeks. And it was Danbury here. Johnny Ruiz apparently took a high stick to the face. 
there was no call on the ice. They then talked about it. They called a high stick on Nick Gullo, who went to the box. There was no blood, nothing. Well, Here we have blood. They discussed it, maybe, and there's no call. I, I, I just, the, the inconsistency is what I think is the problem. Jake, I'm just baffled, honestly. I think the best line of the evening was, there's hands raised, it's just not the two guys that have to make the call. Because clearly there's hands all over the place besides everyone waving for the penalty. Like, in my opinion, I think the rule book says if blood's drawn, it's a double minor penalty for high sticking. So, hopefully Mock's okay. Obviously, Mock's a guy, you need him out there. You saw his speed already on the power play. Be able to do a wonderful job so far. And, Looking at the scores right now, out of Talport here on up eight to one over Delaware. Of course, a 2-0 hockey game. Watertown over Danbury, 3-2 for Columbus over Mississippi. And we're back to 504 hockey once again. As another clear for Binghamton. So it'll be Stavros is picking up in his own end for Kyle Stevens. Stevens will go behind the net of Thomas Proudlock with less than a minute left here on the power play for Elmira. Wearing their green sweaters tonight. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, Luke Richards stops at the blue line. Pass down low for Leeson. Mac Lewis loses his twig. Richards for Stevens. Stevens walks in, shoots that one, just goes wide. Lewis able to get back and get his piece of wood. Battle in the corner. Pinching in is Kyle Stevens. Stevens loses it. Mac Lewis going to skate away with it. Two on two with Brett Parker. 23 seconds left here on the penalty. Lewis. Through the high slot, top of the circle, shoots in and out of the glove of Proudlock. Pass off for Stevens. And Stevens will hand off for Stavros Soilis. The alternate captain through the neutral zone, goes past the logo. Shields into the offense zone, looks to play it off for Luke Richards. Pass for McGuire. McGuire down low, Stevens. Stevens, cross ice pass looking for Tate Leeson. It jumps over his stick. D'Angelo out of the box, back to even strength hockey. Luke Richards sends one through the blue paint to the near side. McGuire, first one to it, now battling with D'Angelo. And the Mammoth lose possession. It's Matthew Boilar. They'll head for a change. Luke Richards, back-to-back -back games with a goal for the Mammoth. Looking to keep the point streak alive are a few of these guys. Don Oliveri into the offensive zone. Poked off his stick, Blake Cudmore. Cudmore battles in the near side corner. He's dropped down to the ice. Tom McGuire. Into the offense zone, throws one on net. It goes off the netting and out of play. So with 14.35 remaining, an offensive zone face off to come now for Almira. As they, once again, go scoreless on the power play and so far in this contest. And of course, we are under 15 minutes of play, so we're gonna take immediate time out here. As the Mammoth look for answers, they'll talk to the coaching staff and sort it out. Right now, shots on goal. Three to one in favor of Binghamton in this period. As you look at the power plays, three for seven for Binghamton, 0 oh for three for Elmira. Is obviously the Mammoth finding three power play goals to make this a 4-0 hockey game. So it looks like the whiteboard back out on the Mammoth bench as they trail by four. And there's less than 15 minutes to play. This group gonna travel down to the Vision Veterans Memorial Arena for the first time in, in what seems like so long, and it has been so long. The Mammoth haven't played in Binghamton since the opening weekend of the season. You can't believe that, really, Zach. That's, that's kind of crazy. A long, long time, Jake, long time. So they'll, they'll head there to that barn. We'll get to uh, hopefully meet some of you Binghamton fans that are watching from home tonight. Stop up at the press box and say hello to us. Is that one? Puck drop, 7 p.m. between Elmira and Binghamton. Back on a tour bus for me, first time in a while. Back in my glory days, playing Acha hockey. Now I get to ride it, go broadcast in a nice Binghamton barn for another FPHL hockey game. Of course, back to the action, 14.30 remaining as Binghamton works through the neutral zone. Austin Thompson in the offensive end, looks to jump by Jim Jensen. He's sent off the puck. Behind the cage, Blake Cudmore shovels one along. Schultz plays it down low, Lopez shoots. That one goes over the net. 
They threw for Cudmore. Cudmore up for Kyle Stevens. Stevens off the boards looking for Tate Leeson who is flying the zone. Kyle Powell able to play it through. And Jake Schultz for Oliveri. Far side Thompson. Thompson shoots it goes over. And Jake Schultz will pick it up in his own zone. Powell behind Joseph. Familiar sight. Kyle Powell waiting behind his netminder. He'll start to work out with it. Pass the dash marks. And pass through for Chad Lopez. Stretch too far from him. No wild. Floats it back through the neutral zone. Powell will go to his own end to chase for Yarwood. Yarwood gains the red line. Plays for Oliveri who dumps it in. 13-25 remains in the final frame. Yeletskis can't handle it. Oliveri going to send one in. A pad save. Proud lock. Shuffled through for Yelenskis. Anderson lays a body. It's to the far side for Luca Richards. Mac Lewis, near side Walters. Walters off the backboards for Cam Yarwood, who waits below the goal line. Near side through for Mac Lewis, who flies into the offensive zone. Down the right wing. Goes into the corner, circles the net. Drop Perry Yarwood. Yarwood skating in. Plays down low. Circle in the cage. Proudlock got across. And they're going to call it a goal. It just trickled underneath the right pad of Thomas Proudlock. Gavin Yates makes it 5 0. Well, another one. Chalk it up. as a 5 on 5 goal. As Gavin Yates buries. The former Elmira Enforcers gets his 15th goal of the season on a wraparound opportunity. It looked like Proudlock had made the initial save. It must be Yates put another jab at it, and it went underneath the pad of Thomas Proudlock. Well, it's 5-0, and some of the fans have had enough. They're going to head to the cars as the Black Bear fans chucking up the five. They'll make it 5-0 with 12-38 remaining here in the third period. Elmire stunned. Into the offense zone for Tate Leeson. Leeson circles sent down to the ice by Thompson. To the point, Pikarski. Pikarski circles, shoots, it's wide. Lambert. Can't contain it. It's Brett Parker one on one with Tyler Pikarski. And it'll be Parker to the far side for Gino D'Angelo. D'Angelo stretches it too far from himself. Tyson Lambert looks to clear, reaches as far as Gino D'Angelo threw a shot on net as it goes off the backboards. Leeson looked to play for himself. It's for Soyuz in the neutral zone. He'll gain the offensive end. Puts the brakes on. Waits with it. Shot on net. That one goes high off the glass. And Brett Parker the other direction. Parker floats it in, and that'll give Binghamton a change at 11.45. Blake Cudmore circles the net. Near side pass for Tyson Lambert. Lambert can't handle, but he's able to poke it off the stick of Austin Thompson. Played to the far side. Kyle Powell catches it in his chest. And the Mammoth can't clear. Chad Lopez with pressure from behind by Lance Hamilton. Hamilton, first action we've seen here of the third period. Tom McGuire in the offensive zone. Plays down low. Hamilton, he shoots, saved by Joseph. And the rebound scooped up by Binghamton. Played down low for Anderson. Anderson centering pass. McGuire couldn't drag by. And it's poked through into the neutral zone. D to D go Almira. Cubmore for Jensen. They'll play catch. And Cubmore going to fire it in. Joseph out of his cage to play it. Hasn't seen much action tonight, but has stopped every shot he's faced. Got a shutout going. Tom McGuire down the far side. He sent off the puck, sent flying into the boards. Yeah, Schultz took care of him as with 10.41 remaining here in the third period. Of course, the Mammoth Hole next weekend hosts the Carolina Thunderbirds Friday night, 7.30 start, 6.30 start on Saturday as we line up for another offensive power, or face off. Just got an update on Tristan Mock. He's headed off to see the paramedics to the hospital. He got a stick caught up in the eyelash, in the eye, and in the cheek. 
with a lot of blood, so he's headed off. We hope everything's all right for Tristan Mock as Yates fires a shot on Thomas Proudlock, who makes the save. So Mammoth's going to be without Mock for the rest of the night. We obviously hope everything's okay. He's going to have to get stitches. Potentially not going to be in the lineup tomorrow night as well. Still not enough evidence, though, to figure out whether or not it's a penalty or not, but, you know. Clearly not enough evidence. Not enough. It's not enough anymore, the FJHL. Sorry, I shouldn't be nagging on the referees. I feel bad. Overall, though, who, who knows if it, it's an amazing power or penalty kill so far by Binghamton. So who knows if that would have had any impact on the score. Of course, hopefully Mock's okay. Yarwood on the far side, pressure from behind as it works its way into the near side corner. Tate Leeson. Leeson pass out in front, look for Kyle Stevens. It's to the far side, Noah Wild gonna jab it back in. Mammoth touch up. Taylor Joseph. He was it off for Gavin Yates. Yates past the dash mark, skates to the far side now. Into the offense zone, goes by one, looks to drag by two. Now he's taken down by Tyson Lambert. It finds its way to Tate Leeson. Leeson with pressure from behind by Logar. And Joseph plays it to the near side corner. Kyle Stevens is centering pass. Joseph got a stick on it. Disrupted the passing lane. It's going to be Richards, who's taken down from behind by Mac Lewis. And that'll draw a hand. Yeah, Lewis is going to go for holding there. He got his hand up and over the back of Leeson, or no, that wasn't, that was Lambert. So Mac Lewis goes, sits down for two. Another power play, 9.31 remaining. You can never say never, Jake. Can never say never as we hit under 10 minutes remaining in the final frame, and that's gonna bring us to our under 10 media timeout. Five nothing Binghamton leads. Two minutes to Mac Lewis in the box. And this one getting out of hand here tonight, Zach. Yeah, Binghamton really just take advantage of the power play. I know we're kind of beating a dead horse right now, but it's the storyline. It's the difference maker. This would be a 2-0 hockey game if it wasn't for the man advantages. So Binghamton doing wonders, working on their power play. They bring it into this contest, and they take care of business against Elmira. They're going to definitely come home with two points tonight. And we'll see them once again tomorrow evening on the road in Binghamton. as both coaching staffs talking it over with their teams. Of course, Almira looking to get one in the back of the episode behind Joseph as we see the cart head into the locker room area. Go 10 to Trish and Mock. And two minutes up on the board for Mac Lewis, who sits down in the Sinbin as First Arena continues to empty out here. And it feels like it's just Black Bear fans back to finish this hockey game as they made the trip and obviously they'll travel back to Binghamton tonight. As both teams coming back out from the media timeout, we'll have a face off in the near side corner to the right of Joseph as it's gonna be Richards in to take the face off. Richards with Steven behind him. Tate Leeson who goes to Stevens at the point, he'll fire it into the far side corner. Tate Leeson skates on, away from Powell to the point, Soilus. So this down low, Leeson. Leeson going to wrap it back below the goal line. Schultz and Wild battle. Played to the near side corner. And that one going to be sent down to Thomas Proudlock. 20 seconds of the penalty killed. Stavro Soy is going to pick up behind the net. As we hit the nine minute mark in period number three. Soilus leaves it off for Tate Leeson. It'll be Leeson through the neutral zone. Gains the offensive end. Plays it off for Soyuz. Soyuz drops it down low. Lisa for Stevens. Back to Soyuz. Soyuz thought about letting one rip. It's to the near side board. Stevens. Rink wide. Luke Richards. Soyuz at the point. Back to Richards. Cross ice Stevens. Centering pass that nobody was home to. Jake Schultz going to fire it down. 50 seconds left. On the penalty. No shot there in that sequence. As you can move the puck around a lot on the exterior, but the Black Bears not allowing a shot on that penalty kill so far. Soyuz puts on the brakes, able to get a pass away for Kyle Stevens. Three on two as they enter the zone. Stevens down low, shoots that one off the mask of Taylor Joseph and out of play. Hello, how are you? That one's going to ring a bell on the inside, though, and shot totals two to seven 
in favor of Binghamton here in the third stanza. 47 total from the Black Bears tonight. And you know, you shoot the puck 47 times, it's bound to go in, Jake. Last week, Danik Rodriguez made 52 saves on 54 shots. So the Mammoth, a team that give up a lot of shots, but in this one, been a man down for the majority of it and only 18 shots on net. It's been a real hard game tonight for this Elmira team as Taylor Joseph over at the Binghamton bench getting his mask looked at. Either a screw came out or they're going to have to tighten something, but... A couple straps came loose, Prowler. That puck. Never want to hit a goalie in the mask in practice, I can tell you that, Dick. Yeah, yeah, it's happened to us a few times, actually, uh, to Thomas Proudlock, who had to get his teeth replaced at a mammoth practice due to a puck coming up high. They got dental insurance or what? They do. Yeah. Saw the thing. best dentist in town. Love that for him. Well, ortho action. Joseph possibly getting a new mask, a dent in the other one. Riley McVeigh, the backup goaltender. He's been a starter for the majority of the games for Binghamton. We'll probably see him tomorrow night unless they go back to Joseph, who's hanging on to a shutout right now with 8.03 to play in period number three. We gotta remember Joseph's having a night. Coming in right now, he's got 18 saves. Hasn't been tested too much, so you could go back to him. Wouldn't be a bad option. Off the faceoff, Boilar looks to clear. It's Anderson at the point. Leaves it off for Jensen. Jensen gets it back. Far side, Cudmore. For Dalton Anderson, top of the circle. Him and Cudmore will switch spots. Anderson now to the top of the key. Cudmore. Jensen tried to line one up, but it goes between his legs. Ten seconds left on the power play. Yelenskis skating down low with it. Wraps it around back through for Jensen to the far side. Cudmore with a shot saved by Joseph. Puck loose in front. McGuire taken down by JT Walters. Right out in front. The penalty concludes. The Black Bears stay 100% tonight on the penalty kill. Well, once again, Elmire just can't get shots through. They're just passing the puck around like it's passing. And you can pass the puck all you want, but you got to shoot the puck eventually to put it in the back of the net. So Elmire just needs to work it around a little bit more and find some shots on Joseph. Even if it's not the perfect shot, go get a gritty goal. Go get a greasy one down low in the crease. 7.30 remain another offensive zone faceoff for Elmira. Another faceoff win here for the Black Bears, and that one set out of play. All four officials looking around at each other. Nobody hand raised for delay a game. Seven twenty-six left here in the period. Another face-off, same spot. They're going to redo that one. A couple new players out. So it is for Stevens. Stevens is going to play it down low. So it's tied up in the circle. Pass across for Leeson. Leeson tried to bat out of the air. Joseph got to it. Pass out of front. Shot. They score. Jim Jensen finds his first as a mammoth. And this group able to get one. It's 5-1. His second career of the HL goal. What a goal to get. Put a one up on the board as Almara looks to get back involved in this one. A little late in the hockey game to do so, but check out the replay, folks. Joseph out of position, looking around for a, the loose puck, and it pops out to Jensen on top. Good play from below the goal line to get it out to him. And it's just a loose puck, a gritty goal, as I would say. Right off the face off. 7-16 remaining, it's a 5-1 hockey game here as we have hockey back on the way here in the third period. Taylor Joseph shut out no longer. Some say the announcers jinx, some say a good play shot by Jim Jensen. Well, hey, when the goalies misplaced, you gotta put it on that, and that's what they did here. Don Oliveri is gonna skate into the offense zone. Pass to the far side for Chad Lopez. Anderson on the far side. Oliveri going to wrap it back below the goal. Schmidt skates out with it. Pass for Tom McGuire. I mean, Schultz jab at it. Finds Schultz at the red line. Schultz try to jump by one to find Jelenski's. Jelenski's two on one with Dalton Anderson into the offense zone. Pass for Anderson. It's blocked by Kyle Powell. Jelenski's opted to pass instead of shoot. It's going to be a two on one. Oliveri pass down low. This one blocked by Lambert in the lane. On Oliveri, past Jelenskis, threw a short-sided shot on. That goes up 
into the crowd. Yeah, well, it was a three on one opportunity. They're off the turnover in the offensive zone. And it's a two on one opportunity for Elmira. And unfortunately, they go for the pass instead of a shot. And it gets blocked. A good play by the defenseman there. And back the other way comes a loose buck and a turnover in favor of Binghamton. 6 12 remaining, 5 1 hockey game. The Mammoth Chuck up one there. Now a defensive zone faceoff for the guys in green. So Jim Jensen gets his first career goal as an Elmira Mammoth. And the Mammoth still trail by four here at the six minute mark. Stevens for Soyuz, three on three. Soyuz into the offensive zone, the back pressure from Lewis. Shot coming on, blocked by Walters, left off for Lewis. And he'll skate in. Andrew Logar worked off the puck by Pikarski. Pikarski with pressure from Lewis. Kyle Stevens chased two on two. Stevens shoots wide of Joseph. And it finds its way out into the neutral zone. Delayed offsides here on Elmira. They regroup. And JT Walters behind the net. Starts his way through. D to D with Yarwood. Yarwood down the far, far side. Skates to center. Tried to drive down Main Street. It's worked into the corner. Yarwood, one goal tonight to the backhand with pressure from Cudmore. Tried to center one blocked by Cudmore. And intercepted by Elmira. Pass for Yelenskis. Yelenskis up for Tom McGuire. Catches it, plays it down to his tape, goes to the backhand. Shoots on Joseph, it's saved. Yarwood takes down McGuire. No hands raised again here. There's a twig loose. Yelenskis will pick up at the point. Skate in, it's sent off him. And Justin Samaro for Yates. Yates into the offense zone. He's going to play it in deep. Couple more for McGuire. McGuire looks to clear the zone. D'Angelo can't keep it at his skate. He'll work back into the neutral zone. D'Angelo walking in. Shoots, a shrug save there by Proudlock. Rebound chance is wide. Boylar going to work out with it. Shoots, it goes high and into the netting. It's a good defensive stick there by Cudmore to keep that one out. And Prodlock making a save again. The rebound opportunity. Puck comes loose right into the faceoff circle on the near side. And that one goes up and into the upper netting. No score there. Good. A great A opportunity once again. 4-19 remaining. Thomas Prodlock, 43 saves tonight. With still 4-19 to play. He's been putting his body on the line here. As we'll look at the, obviously the collision of the game, but heading into the media timeout under five minutes to play here in the third period. Talk about shots on goal this evening, 48 for Binghamton, 21 for the Mammoth, who have not reached the 10 shot mark in the 20 minutes since the first period. As they sit at five here in the final stanza. Jim Jensen and the collision of the game leveling Matthew Boilar. So 4.19 to go here in regulation. As we mentioned, the Mammoth will be back in action tomorrow night, 7 o'clock puck drop in Binghamton. And right now, Port here on that game final against Delaware. 8-1, to one, the Prowlers win. Danbury able to get one back against the Watertown Wolves. Still with 12 minutes, 13 minutes and counting in that game. And the Hattricks cut the deficit in half. And that one with a goal from Daniel McKittrick. Just 31 seconds into the third period, but we're back to action here at First Arena. We'll have a face off on the near side in the defensive zone for Elmira now. As 4-19 remaining here in the final stanza as Elmira wins a face off. Schmidt to the near side, picked up by Newberg. Now for Parker, Parker gonna wrap it back in as they Find the puck down the far side. Newberg plays back. And now it'll be for Samara. Samara to the top of the dot. And it's poked free by Tate Leeson. That creates a two on one. Soilus for Leeson. And a good stick there from D'Angelo. Put the puck into the corner. Another odd man advantage with a good defensive play here from the Black Bears. Matthew Boylar near side, Samara. Samara with a stretch pass. Met by Brett Parker. Parker into the offense zone. He'll skate by. Played into the far side corner. Christopher Maritea will pick up. Maritea through for Soilus. 
So they're just going to float one through for Tate Leeson. Leeson will chase. And Kyle Powell on. Powell up for Jake Schultz. The Black Bears captain into the offensive zone. Drop past Thompson. He shoots pad save. Proud lock. And it's going to be a penalty coming up here on the Binghamton Black Bears. Yelensky's into the offensive zone. Binghamton now finally able to touch up. And they'll head to the box for interference at 3.04. See me, Jake Schultz going to the penalty box. The captain took a guy down after he dished off the pass. It's the defenseman. So 3.04 remaining, another power play here. So far, a total of 12 penalties in this contest. The 12th coming right now, two minutes up on the board. 3.04 remaining here in the third period. The captain couldn't understand why he was headed to the box, but then he sit down. He sat down with no regards to the call. So 3:04 left in regulation. Mammoth trail by four. They're going to get another power play opportunity. They haven't got a power play goal all game, and the Mammoth first power play unit out there. It's Kyle Stevens on the near side. Please catch with Soilus. Out for Luke Richards. Richards to the point shot on Joseph, and no rebound as he'll freeze it. Just 15 seconds in. Well, Wild and Leeson were right on the doorstep waiting for one. There's no loose buck, though. As with 2.49 remaining, we'll have another face off on the far side now. Everyone's staying out there for Elmira and for the Black Bears. Face off below the goal line. JT Walter is going to fire one. That clears his own all the way down to Thomas Proudlock. A big clear there for the big up to Black Bears. So Soyuz waits on the far side half wall, plays for Stevens. Stevens in his own zone. Drop past Soyuz as the Mammoth look to set up here. A little, little bit of intensity now. You're down by four, you need to get a quick one. Joseph out of the net to play it. Richard shoots, Joseph makes the save. Puck still loose. Now it comes out, Richard shoots, he scores! Luke Richards keeps the streak going. It's three straight games. Potting a goal, it's 5-2. Making a power play goal, another commotion in the crease. And it's the 12th goal of the season in its 41st game this year. Richards makes it a 2-6 to six hockey game. Or 2-5, to five, excuse me. If you look at the replay, and it was just pandemonium in the crease once again. And Zach, you talked about it. The Mammoth, doesn't matter what kind of shot you put on net, get a greasy goal. You just got to shoot the puck. And that's exactly what that was, you was a greasy goal. Puck, you got a greasy goal. It's a 5-2 hockey game. A little bit of intensity here. They can make it a two-goal game. And Proudlock's coming to the bench. So Six on five, extra skater. So Proudlock to the bench with two minutes remaining. Kate Leeson will come out, be the sixth skater, and they'll set it up. Schmidt fires one on net. Joseph. Able to hang on to the redirection from Leeson and freeze the puck at 152. Now, if you're the coach except for Elmira, when do you use your timeout? Is it now? You get a face off with a minute 52? All right, that's exactly what Mike Cosentino's drew and gets yep. the attention of Kyler Spies, and the Mammoth will take their timeout. He'll chuck up the tee, and we'll get the whiteboard out over on the bench with the guys in the green. I mean, Zach, they're down by three with less than two minutes to play. It is March. There's a lot of madness. Fairleigh Dickinson University beat number one seed Purdue today. Nothing is out of the question. The Mammoth. You gotta get a you gotta get a face off goal here. You gotta get a quick, you gotta get one within 10, 15 seconds well, so, to even have a shot. So what you're lining up here, either it's gonna be on the left side, near side. So what I'm lining up is I'm gonna put a guy on the back left corner, closest to the near side point. And I'm going to chuck a guy on the far side on the back door. The goal is to win it back to him, move a guy down low to a guy in the near side corner, and send it cross ice on the back door to a wide open whoever. Could be Tate Leeson. Could be anybody. So really, if you're the mammoth, win the face off to the near side sideboards, run a guy to the corner, and send it to the back door. That's the play I'm running if I'm a coach here. Well, Zach. I love the play idea, I, but I too bad. Too bad you're 25 feet away from the ice and couldn't let the guys know. 
But we'll see what the play is. Off the faceoff, it's held up in the circle below the goal line. You gotta win the faceoff and run the play though, unfortunately. Pass intercepted. And skating out with it is Andrew Logar. Logar throws a shot on net blocked by Dalton Anderson. Stavros Soilis leaves it off for Dalton Anderson as we approach a minute and a half remaining. Far side Soilis drops it back for Richards. Richards continues his impressive point streak as a member of the purple and orange. Tate Leeson will fly through the neutral zone, gains center ice now into the offense zone. Leeson all by himself to the back end, shoots it just wide. Taylor Joseph got just enough to the point Soilis. Soilis fires one on net that goes over the head of Joseph. And picked up by Andrew Logar. Logar for Gavin Yates. Yates into the offensive zone. He'll pick it, he'll score. Gavin Yates with the empty netter as we just hit under a minute. And that'll be the final straw. The Black Bears get another one, it's 6-2. Well, Mac Lewis is gonna get the assist on that. He was able to find the loose puck in the defensive zone, dish it up to his teammate. And send it down. And 59 seconds remaining, 6-2 hockey game. Product's gonna go back into the bench, or into the crease. And this one's over here, folks, in first arena. Elmira unable to find points. Their win streak is going to come to an end. And the losing streak for Binghamton is going to also come to an end. They're on a two-game skid. They will find points once again. And the road trip will end tomorrow night, hosting Elmira for a 7 o'clock clock drop right here. Thank you. So the Black Bears will move to 28, 14, and 4 on the season. As one-on-one, -on -one, Yelensky skates into the offensive zone. He'll put a brakes on, shoot, saved. Puck loose, and Joseph able to hold on to it. Got to call every minute of every action here, but the Elmira Mammoth, they're gonna move to 13, 27, and six. Still sit in fourth place in the Empire Division. And an Empire Division note, Danbury, they were down two nothing in the third period. They've stormed all the way back to take a 3-2 lead. So the Mammoth, close eyes on that, especially with a Watertown loss. You don't lose any position in the standings. Delaware already lost eight to one. Well, both teams lose. You're, you're right, Jake. No one, uh, no one gets anywhere. Good opportunity there off the faceoff, but 24 seconds remaining here in the third. Lambert looking for Lance Hamilton comes to the point for Tyson Lambert. He'll play it into the far side corner. Lambert with his first career professional points last week. Good for the former college kid in the ACAC. Shot on and a stick save by Proudlock, and I believe they're going to get an offside. On Don Oliveri with less than 10 seconds remaining in regulation. Well, hey, you come away. Binghamton showed up in the first period. They showed up on the power play. That's the difference maker tonight. It, it would have been roughly 2-2. Of course, scored one of their goals right at the tail end of a penalty kill. So it would have been a 2-2 game if you take the penalties out of the question mark. So, you know, coming away with a loss though on St. Paddy's Day, this one over. So the Mammoth fall to the Binghamton Black Bears, 6-2. Here at First Arena, repping the St. Patrick's Day sweaters. And Thomas Proudlock, 45 saves tonight. Did a great job in between the pipes. Defense hung him out to dry. And as well as being down a man for the majority of this one. So the Mammoth will move to tomorrow night to take on the Black Bears tomorrow at Division's Veterans Memorial Arena in Binghamton, New York. Zach, we'll be there. Your thoughts on that, as well as tonight's game. Well, tomorrow's gonna be a big game. If you wanna stay in the hunt for the playoffs and make sure Delaware doesn't catch you, you gotta split the weekend. They were able to do it last weekend. You gotta split the weekend. And overall, a disappointing result for Elmira. They didn't play, I don't think, a complete period at all tonight. And when you go to the penalty box seven-ish times, that's what's gonna happen. And of course, yeah, you could say there was a couple missed calls, but the power play not really making an impact for the Mammoth tonight besides like that one power play goal possibly. So, need a better result tomorrow night if you're Elmira. Obviously, the fans coming out supporting, but need to have a better result on the road. And for Elmira, we'll obviously give an update on Tristan Mock when we hear it tomorrow after, uh, after the day, and hopefully we'll get a good update on him tomorrow night to give to everyone on the Elmira Mammoth Mixer, but that'll do it from the First Arena Press Box. For Zachary Case, I'm Jake Johnson. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Everyone have a great rest of your night. Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is Jake Johnson signing off.